on top. That 88 car is looking really good. Jimmy Johnson is the benchmark. Here comes Carl. Do not count her out. Ready to race in the desert. Bring it on, boys. Well, don't look back because everybody's coming. I have never, never seen anything like that. What, what a feeling. How bad do you want it? Let's go racing in the desert, boys. From the top of Rattlesnake Hill, NASCAR on Fox welcomes you to Subway Fresh Fit 500. Engines have fired. Let's get late-breaking stories from Pit Road, beginning with Chris Tavota. Well, Mike, Betty Hamlin had a great eighth-place starting position. And I say had because the team had to give it up when they made an engine change yesterday. Denny Hamlin, a big golf fan, comes to this area often. He told me right before he got in the car, this would be like playing around a golf and being able to only use your putter. Is there concern? Yes. Can it? No. Remember, Denny finished first and second here at this track last year. It'll be fun to watch him drive through the field from the back of the pack. Steve Burns. Well, Krista, a bit of a last-minute thrash here for the 24 car, getting through inspection and getting on the grid. I spoke to crew chief Alan Gustafson. He said that his car chief, Josh Kirk, had suffered a kidney stone attack last night, but they're okay. Just late getting through tech. Jeff Gordon, if you talk to the people in the garage area, he's going to be one of the cars to beat today, Matt Yoakum. Steve Casey Kane trying to erase that disappointing run at Daytona where he finished 36 by scoring another win here at Phoenix. Now, Casey told me a lot of questions and concerns going into today's race. Number one, he told me the weather. About an hour ago, the cloud cover rolled in. Temperatures have dropped, but he said his biggest thing, he wants to get to the bottom because his car and everyone else seemingly not having a lot of grip like they expected coming to Phoenix with this new car and new tires. So, Jeff Hammond, it could be very exciting, the opening laps. Yeah, we're hoping so. And every racetrack has a hot spot, Matt. Here at Phoenix, it's got to be turn four. 27 crashes in the last 16 races. And to prove that, you've only got to look back to November, the last race, and the big crash. Will it happen again? We're fixing to find out. Thanks, Jeff. The cars roll off behind the two Toyota Pace cars to establish Pit road speed, and here's your Geico starting. Mark Martin, two-time Phoenix winner, oldest pole winner at this track. Casey Kane, who won here in the fall of 2011. Jimmy Johnson, four-time winner at Phoenix, and Kyle Busch, who won here yesterday. Jeff Gordon has won twice at Phoenix, and Tony Stewart in his first Phoenix Cup start won here, 99. Kevin Harvick's a three-time Phoenix winner, and Denny Hamlin finished first and second of the two races here this year. Ryan Newman won here in 02. Our Matt Kenseth won here in 02, and Ryan Newman has five top fives in the last six races here, including the win. Rookie Ricky Stenhouse and the champ, Brad Keselowski. Clint Boyer, runner-up here in 08. Martin Truex, seventh last year. Carl Edwards trying to break that 70-race winless streak. And Paul Menard, who finished ninth in two of the last three races at Phoenix. And look through the rest of the starting grid, and we'll have Daryl get on the horn. Let's talk to Carl Edwards, what do you say? Uh, hey, five time, it's a DW here, you got a copy? Come on, don't do that to me. It's Phoenix now. We're out of Daytona, but I got you. 10 4, man. Just messing with you a little bit. I know you were glad to get out of Daytona. How do you feel about today, brother? I feel pretty good about it. It's, uh, it's a big race for us. It's the first race Jimmy, Jimmy Bennett and I have worked together at a track where the chassis is real important. It's a big day for Subway, Fast All Ford, everybody to, to be together here at this race. So hopefully it's a good one. We've had a lot of luck in Phoenix. Practice was good. I feel pretty good. All right, my friend, what's your confidence level like after Daytona? You up today? After Daytona, it was, it was no good, but after practice yesterday, I'm, I'm up. I'm ready to race. It's going to be a good one. All right, my friend. Go we'll get it done. And thanks, DW. And you called him five times sure. because? He was kidding. He wrecked five times at Daytona, and he told me, he said, they're going to start calling me five times for all the wrong reasons. While we were out on the roof, I felt, well, I hope it was a raindrop. I think Daryl caught a couple on the way over here. So Hartley has become mostly cloudy. 75 degrees, tra track temperature 86. We had a lot of sun here this morning. And that light breeze from out of the northeast will race 312 laps, 45 miles an hour down pit road, and probably one of the biggest pit windows we've seen in a long time, Larry. Yes, yeah, 78 to 84 laps. Realistically, we talked about a short race. You could make this race in three pit stops. Denny Hamlin, valve spring trouble yesterday. 
Kyle Busch's team replaced valve springs this morning as a precaution and a mistake was made. They fired the engine and broke it and had to replace it. David Stremme uh, with a transmission change also will go to the rear for the start. You know, we had such huge success with the gyro cam at Daytona. Everybody was shocked when they saw the 31 degree bank and what the car looked like. Look at this week compared to last week. We're here this week. The turns are banked nine degrees. And just watch the difference. Watch the upper, watch the lower. Daytona, Phoenix. Hello. Almost zero banking. But Darrell, I think most of the gyro cam action at Phoenix is just from side force. The G's trying to sling you over to the right-hand side of the car. Yeah, one of the really cool shots is going into turn three when the thing rocks to the right momentarily, then back to the left. And it's the feel you get in the car. Today's race is brought to you by Budweiser. The beer that starts with full flavor and ends with a crisp, fast finish. Great times are waiting. Grab some buzz. They added an extra pace lap. Get, uh, track vehicles put away and everybody in their proper lineup. I got to think one thing to keep an eye on on these rest on the starts and restarts today is wheel spin. This track is notorious for wheel spin on the restarts. So to keep an eye on that today. <laughs> David Hoots. How's your racetrack look to you, Caution Mark? Saw Denny Hamlin and Kyle Busch in the 11 to 18 wait to pick today. up at the tail so end of the field. But as I said, they've got fast race cars. They just got to figure out how to get up there to the front. Another fast car is Kurt Busch, but he hit the wall in qualifying, and he has to go to the back because he has a backup car. Kyle Busch yesterday in a nationwide race restarted 23rd. He ended up winning the race with about uh, 30 laps to go. A driving clinic is what it looked like. Yes, sir. I mentioned that was not Kurt Busch's fault. Uh, a water fitting came loose, coolant fitting, put water on the tires, and he went up and into the wall, hurt the car. They're in a backup. Pace car is in. Let's get ready to race in the desert. Boogity, boogity, boogity. Let's go racing. side-by-side -side battle Tony Stewart trying to take that spot from Jeff Gordon as Mark Martin leads them and Ricky Stenhouse looks like he's been into the fence yeah they're just absolutely no grip up out of, out of the groove it's real dirty it's dirty and dusty up there no grip and Darrell with this weather change changing the grip of these race cars I think we're gonna see a lot of comers and goers guys moving to the front guys going to the rear well Jeff Hammond was in turn four that's calamity corner at Phoenix watch the number 17, blue and yellow, middle of your screen. A little bump and run. A little lightly and slightly, but I think it's going to be okay. Mark Truex was right behind Stenhouse. Still one side. Two still got the 27 with him tight. Keep coming here. Still one side. Still one side. Mark Martin picking up right where he left off yesterday and Friday, winning the poll, winning two practice sessions. If he drives this car next season, his age will match his car number, but you wouldn't know it to see this man work behind the wheel. No, Mark is incredible. I, I saw him win his first poll in 1981, and uh, he was just a young guy then, but he's always been fast, really fast. And he was real happy with that race car. In fact, he only ran seven or eight laps in that final practice yesterday. And, uh, and his, his crew chief, Rodney Children, said he is a smart guy, really smart. A former driver, he knows what he's doing. He knows how to get Mark the car he needs to do what he's doing right now. From the back of the pack, Kyle Busch up to 34th, Denny Hamlin to 31st from the tail end. And they were definitely, Mike, you were talking about three wide at the back of the pack. Both those drivers were involved with that three wide when they dropped the green flag. Right between them is Kurt Busch, that black number 78, who also had to start in the rear. Gyro 
Carol Cam on board Jimmy Johnson. Lowe's 48. Yeah, we're going up the back through the dog leg right here. You see the bank about nine degrees there. Now watch this thing tip just a little to the right and then right back to the left when it gets in that nine degrees of banking. What makes this track hard? Both ends of the track are different. One and two is a totally different corner than three and four is. That's what makes it so hard. Steering sensor on the right side of your screen indicates steering wheel position. Straight up and down would be straight ahead. I would call that tight, wouldn't you, Larry? I would say so. You can see he keeps having to move it to the left as he gets in the corner. He's moving it even more and more and more because the front tires just start gripping. And again, when we look at him going into three and turn three, you'll see how neutral the wheel is getting in that corner because of that little swing down in there. Seven laps complete. Mark Martin is your leader, Krista. Mike, you talked about Mark's age. Let's put this in perspective. When Mark Martin won his first Phoenix race, it was 1993. There are 19 drivers in this field who were not even old enough to get a driver's license, including both of his Michael Waltrip racing teammates. How about one step further? Joey Logano is only three years old. Thanks, Krista. Danica Patrick had moved up a few spots from 35th, but now gives a spot to David Stremme. Here's what she had to say in pre-race. All right, guys, thanks for working hard all weekend. I'm going to do the best job I can out here, and I know you're going to do the same. Yep, roger that. We'll uh, take it one pit stop at a time, one segment at a time. We'll do our best today. And that's a lot what they talked about at Daytona, taking it one race at a time, one week at a time, and not setting expectations. She said, we've got to get four or five races under our belt before we can know what our expectations truly should be. And one thing I mentioned in the pre-race show, I've watched her in practice, I'm watching her right now in the race. When cars are in front of her, it kind of gives her a target. It kind of helps her say, I need to be quicker here, back in the gas here. It, it seems like she really goes to school on cars that are in front of her and how she gets faster. The challenge for any of the cars in this group is going to be staying on the lead lap. Mark Barton is within half a straightaway of this group with 10 laps complete. NASCAR on Fox will take you side by side. Fourteen laps complete. Mark Martin leading Casey Kane by six tenths of a second. Jimmy Johnson, Jeff Gordon, Tony Stewart. A Toyota leading five Chevrolets and then Matt Kenseth. Brad Keselowski is the fastest Ford right now. He is in 11th. Ninth place battle, Ryan Newman, Clint Boyer, and the champ. I've been watching Clint Boyer in that 15 cars. He's all over the back of Ryan Newman in the 39. Clint started back in the 13th position. I think they finally hit on something yesterday during practice that Clint was really happy with. I don't know that this comes as a big surprise to see him moving to the front. And Ryan Truex with them. And then Matt Kenson. Biggest movers so far. Will not be much surprised to that list. They three of them started in the back. Bush, Hamlin, and Bush. And they have gained a lot of positions. So have Joey Logano and Casey Mears. Watching timing and scoring. The five car Casey Kane much quicker than Mark Martin now. He's got uh, gaining about a tenth or two every lap on our leader, Mark Martin, in the 55. Watch for that five car to take the lead here very shortly. The last time Mark Martin led more than two laps in a race at Phoenix was 2009. He started on the pole, and he won. Another thing that I think is going to somewhat change the way these cars are driving, well, A, we're getting in the long green flag run, but the sun is starting to come out here just a little bit. Hey guys, watching those three cars you were talking about a minute ago, Denny Hamlin in the 11, Kyle Busch in the 18, as well as Kurt Busch in the 78. As they catch these guys working their way through the track, they're actually helping to widen the track out. Denny Hamlin made a couple passes to the outside off the four, then they started back at the bottom. It's really looking like if they could ever get up close to the front, they could be guys that complete this race and challenge more part. Yeah, when you start in the back, you can't be bashful about establishing that second groove. Or as we pointed out, you could end up being lapped long before the first pit stop. Kenny Schrader and Mike Bliss already one lap down. Now, when you get, when you have a really fast car and you get position on a slower car, you sort of dictate where you're going to go. You force that slower car down, he gives you a little extra room. Tony Stewart started fourth. He's running fifth, Steve. And Larry Mack was right. The sun's coming out. The track already changing. Tony Stewart early said it feels 
good on both ends, a little bit tight, three and four. Just moments ago, he says it is free when I get back to the gas in both ends, worse in three and four, already changing. And we know there's probably not a driver that lo loves a track to start losing grip and start getting slicked than Tony Stewart in that 14 car. Yeah, when you come off a of turn two over there, the track opens up. You don't have to pinch the car down. We got a car in the wall up here in turn three and four. And it's Scott Riggs. Uh, we're told he blew a tire and the car went right up into the wall at Calamity Corner, turn four. His Ford was running 37th. 20 laps into a run, you use so much brake here and there's so much brake heat and it transfers to that steel wheel. A lot of times it will just cook the beat of the tire that steals the tire to the rim. Yeah, if, if a car's not handling well, you've got to slow it down. And the only way you can slow it down is use a lot of brake, and then that's what happens. Short day for the no-label watches Ford of Scott Riggs. So on this first caution of the day, a free pass will go to Landon Castle and the number 33. That's the Aaron's lucky dog. You don't need credit. All you need is Aaron's and that Jackson Pollock painting looking paint scheme. Uh, that's called Firestorm Camouflage. Looks like a Woodland Wildfire on Castle's car. Looks like something Boyer ought to have on his car. <laughs> go with his camo limo. Pits are open. Going to have a lot of takers for mid-pack. Well, most of the drivers up at the front stayed out, but what these drivers are hoping for that's making pit stops, and then we'll go 10 or 15, 20 laps, get a caution like Kyle Busch here in the 18, and then they will stay out and get that track position. It was going to take something like this to get them to the front. But, Larry, I do also think it shows you just how important track position is, that you'd give up a chance to pit to stay up front. Krista. Kyle Busch racing his way from the back of the pack right now, saying his car is loose in and loose off. It started off feeling good. The call for the 18 of Kyle Busch, right side tires only. Short track racing on the mile in the desert. We're not in Daytona anymore, Toto. An inside look at what's happening in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series brought to you by Sprint. Mark Martin has the fastest of the 24 laps run so far. Get unlimited access to NASCAR with the NASCAR Mobile 13 app and truly unlimited data from Sprint. Learn more at Sprint.com slash speed. The first 13 drivers stayed out on track, plus Marcus Ambrose, Joey Logano, Kurt Busch, Denny Hamlin, and Dave Blaney. Everybody else came to pit road at lap 22, so we have two decidedly different strategies at work here. Well, and truly what those drivers that hit pit road, I said it would they open pit road. What they hope is we go about 15, 20 laps, knowing these drivers that stayed out will have to come to pit road, we'll be halfway through a fuel run there. We'll check with Chris Myers and Michael Waltrip. And we see Danica Patrick has moved up from where she started 40th. Uh, Michael, the Gen 6 car, the, the downforce and the relationship to tire wear, we're already seeing an effect. Yeah, a lot of people are really interested what these tires would do. We're packing in a lot of corner speed. Their cars are faster in the center of the turn, so therefore they're wearing the tires more. NASCAR was hoping the teams would have to use differing strategies to mix things up. First caution with this Gen 6 car at a downforce track, that's exactly what we've seen. It'll be interesting to see how much ground the guys that got tires and pitted made on the ones that stayed out. So the crew chiefs, the strategy, will be keeping an eye on that. Let's head back up to Daryl Larry and Mike. Scott Riggs' car being removed from the track and a little bit of fluid cleanup from the turn four wall. Couple to watch who did stop. Greg Biffle comes out 19th, Jeff Burton 20th, and Ricky Stenhouse, the first car to pit from 13th position. He's now 21st because a number of drivers behind him stayed out. Montoya, Almendinger, Kyle Busch, Earnhardt McMurray among those who pitted. Everybody from Biffle on back has been to pit road during this caution. As you look at the ticker across the top of the screen, uh, Scott Riggs checked and released at the care center after an apparent cut tire put him into the wall at turn number four. Based on what I saw before that caution, Mike, I believe that five car is uh, ready to pounce on the 55 and take the lead here. It looks to me like Kane got a fast car. Notice Ryan some white rims there on Brad Keselowski's car. They're turned black. That, talk, that just supports about all the brakes these guys are using, this brake dust. 
Coming around a complete lap 27. First caution of the day cleaned up and we're back under green. Mark Martin trying to hold the lead from that green car of Casey Kane. Yeah, Kane didn't get a great restart. I think he uh, spun the tires and scopes, but he's going to be all right. Casey Kane in that five. He's got his hands full with Jimmy Johnson in that 48. His teammate, Jimmy, got the preferred line going into three. Five times, the real five times. He wants to get up there and show what he's got. Matt Yoakum. And good news for Jimmy Johnson fans early on. Jimmy said his car a little tight rolling through the center, but his car is absolutely awesome from center to exit. He can jump back in the gas when he needs, and you can definitely see it on the racetrack. Try to do something, Mike, that Kenseth did back in 2009, open up the season winning the first two races. You know, Darrell, you talked about him in the pre-race. Kevin Harvick in that 29 car started in the seventh position. Working all over Jeff Gordon in the 24 now for fifth. Remember, Harvick finished second in the spring here and won the fall race. There's, there are horses for courses. This is one of his courses, one of his best. Just never got an opportunity to show what he had in the Daytona 500 caught up in that early crash. He just, Jeff Gordon in the 24, Darrell, just keeps it wound up there in that second group. Oh, Harvick got into him. That was a hello, I'm here. And I'm sure Harvey's calling, I'm not Boyer, I'm not Boyer. There. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> and Harvick makes the pass. Of course, Jeff Gordon's saying, why is everybody always picking on me? <laughs> now it's Ryan Newman and Kozlowski side by side for night. Smoke's going to rub up. <laughs> And look at Kurt Busch in that 78 car, the black car behind them. Remember, to the rear of the field, a backup car. He, he was one of the drivers that elected not to come to pit road. But with a backup car, what, what a race car he's got. Just keeps moving to the front. Yeah, he was really good in practice yesterday. Had one of the faster cars. And in a 10-lap run, uh, consecutive laps, he was the third best car on the, on the field. Now that yellow line just means that's the inside of the racetrack. There is no out of bounds. And it's been a tough week for Kurt Busch. He's been fighting the flu all week. He had a cool finning come off on his qualifying run, knocking the primary car out. He is in a backup. And yesterday, exiting the tunnel here at turn four, his mom was on a golf cart along with seven other people, which flipped over. She was treated and is okay. I think it's also important to note about the 78 car. They, they have such a tight alliance with RCR now, really working closely with Childress. Got to think if Harvick's good here, that, that should trickle down to the 78 as well. Let's check back at the lead where Mark Martin has 1.3 seconds on Jimmy Johnson. It's a further three tenths, which is about four car lengths back to Casey Kane. Ryan Newman running in 12th position after starting sixth, Matt. Mike Newman's last three wins all came on the flatter type tracks Martinsville New Hampshire and Phoenix but they've got some work to do if he's going to score a fourth because Newman's one constant complaint all weekend long the car is unstable especially going into three just way too free and that's his biggest problem still and you know if you think about Tony Gibson he's a Danica's crew chief he was Ryan Newman's crew chief last year here and, and listen Danica's and Newman's car look like they're doing the same thing to me so uh, they need to talk to uh, Steve Addington to see if they can figure out what Tony's doing. Kurt Busch up into the top 10 after starting at the back. Steve. Mike, he may be having trouble. He just radioed to his crew and said, all of my gauges are red. Water temp 275. All right, what he means by in the red, these gauges, water temperature, oil temperature, oil pressure, they all have warning lights. But I would be hesitant of saying it's actually an engine issue if all the gauges are red. It almost tells me there's something electrical that's making those gauges show that. What did we say yesterday about tape on the grill, tape on the brakes? Brand new race car. Nobody really knows for sure how much tape to run on the grill, how much tape to run on the brake ducts. I'd venture to say they've got it taped up a little too tight working up through the traffic. Meanwhile, younger brother Kyle, who put on a driving clinic here in the Saturday race, even a pit road speeding penalty that put him back to the back of the field did not keep him from victory lane. I'm so impressed with how he's been handling things, though. You go back last week to the Daytona 500, had the engine issue, and 
He, he's just handling things with so much more maturity than maybe he would a couple of years ago. Comes in here, he has to start this race at the rear of the field because of the injury change. Piles up to 16th, and he's now the first in the running order of the cars who pitted under caution. Mark Truex Jr. carrying our brake and suspension cam today on board his number 56 Napa Toyota. You know, with, with Kyle, one thing about it, he gets he's going to run a lot more nationwide races this year. He won yesterday. That's almost like a constellation prize. If you have trouble on Sunday, it's a little bit easier to swallow because, man, I had a great Saturday. At least I won something. And that man loves to win. That's all it's about. Here's a look at the suspension cam. You see the brakes glowing red on the right, and on the left of that, the headers glowing as well. Let's go down to our touchscreen of Jeff Hammond. Yeah, Mike, we're down here at the Ford Racing Tech Cutaway. Uh, the screen, and we want to show you real quick what we're talking about here. Here's the front end suspension right now, and now we want to talk about brakes and how hot they actually can get. This is a normal temperature. This is what happens and what we're looking at as far as the 55 car or 56 car and how much temperature is actually given out. This rotor here, as you can see, is almost 1,100 degrees, and what it does, it transfers that heat through the caliper into the rim of the tire wheel the tire just like what happened to Scott Riggs inside and out this thing's 1200 degrees folks and all of a sudden when it gets that hot it superheats the rim of the tire burns and melts down the bead of that tire the tire will fare lose the lose your air hit the outside safer barrier just like we saw Scott Riggs do earlier thanks Jeff Kyle Busch against Ryan Newman and that's for 15th position you know who yeah. uh, never has a brake problem Kyle Busch you know why he doesn't use them. <laughs> Stays off of them. Kurt Busch rolls up into ninth in front of Paul Menard, chasing Brad Keselowski. Mark Martin is your leader. Time today, Kyle Busch had raced his way up to 15th position and spun at turn two. He'd been working on Carl Edwards in that 99. Darrell, he was up, up the racetrack. Just got out a little too wide. There's not a lot of grip out there. Uh, a slight contact to the left front. Don't know how much damage that did. Taking a look outside. Real loose up there, real loose. He's spinning behind you. All right, pit road is open. Second caution of the day, Steve. And Jeff Gordon saying that the characteristics of the car changing as the fuel burns off. Anticipate them taking just right side tires on the 24, Matt. And Casey Kane in the upper right hand corner of the five car. His car was both free and tight. What they're going to do is just do right side tires and leave the settings similar because that should help tighten them up. Krista. Mark Martin in for his first pit stop of the day. Right side tires only, the call for the 55. He's complaining of loose in and loose off, a similar condition with a lot of the other drivers out there. Nine cars stayed out and did not pit. All of them pitted back at lap 22 on the first caution of the day. Yeah, that we were getting borderline about being able to stay out had that caution not come. Otherwise, I think everyone had, had hit, hit pit road. Kyle Busch fighting his way up through the field. A single car spin puts us back under caution. Back to green when Martin Truex came coasting down pit road. Rear axle problems on his number 56. And this is one of the new things that the teams are having to deal with, that camber in the rear end housing, uh, in, the, in the rear tires. There was a lot of concern during testing in the off season is the, whether the axles and the drive plates if they were durable enough or not to handle the new camber. Yeah, they doubled the amount of rear camber, and rear camber is just the tip in the rear tires that gives the rear end more grip, gives the tires more grip, and it's very hard on parts and pieces. Truex lost an engine here last November while running seven. Now, his teammate, Clint Boyer, had a problem. He came in to do a two-tire change and wants to get out of the pits quickly. And it doesn't go, go. Back up, back, check the right front pinner. Back up, back up, back up, back up. Take a right front pinner. Change left, change left, change left, change left, change left. As a result, Boyer will restart deep in the field. Right now he is listed 39th. 
Kyle Busch is in for repairs to the left front of his number 18 from this spin that put us under caution at lap 49. Whole new cast of characters up front for the restart. The first six cars all pitted at lap 22. Juan Pablo Montoya, Greg Biffle, Ricky Stenhouse, Eric Almarola, David Gilliland, and J.J. Yaley lead Mark Martin and the rest of the field back to green. Kyle Busch restarts 40th. We mentioned Clint Boyer, who restarted 39th. Darrell, you were talking about drivers in practice not going down on the apron on the back stretch. I think some of them decided to try it here in the race. Yeah, well, when they got two or three wide back there, really had no choice but to go the apron. Oh, Montoya wiggles. Almirola looks underneath. Not enough room there. Well, that was some give and take. And how about Ricky Stenhouse Jr. in that 17? He's trying to take advantage. You can see again on Toy and Almirola, the 42-43, cutting the corner down the back stretch. Gilliland's there, and here comes Harvick in the 29. Kane in six, Mark Martin back in ninth. Here's why. Remember, they came in running one and two, but if you look right here, Mark Martin was a little more efficient on his pit road time, but how about that right there? Almost two and a half seconds. That's the difference between winning a battle off pit road or losing. In fact, Casey Kane screwed the fastest that time. Mark Martin screwed the slowest as far as the two tire stops. That team is jacked up, Larry. The car is fast. Casey doing a nice job in that five car, and the pit crew is helping him. Greg Biffle out front and pulling away by four tenths of a second now. And his number 16 Ford. You know, Biffle had a great Daytona, Mike. He ran up front in every race he was in. The 150s, every race he was in, he ran right up front. Yeah, he finished second in the Sprint Unlimited and the Budweiser Duel, and a lot like Danica Patrick and Denny Hamlin, just somewhat in the wrong line on that last restart in the 500. Yeah, Danica and, and, uh, and and then we're going to work together, but it didn't work out. Last year, Biffle finished third in this race and seventh in the fall Phoenix event. You know, guys, before the race started, we heard guys and girls talking about how loose the top side could possibly be. Kyle Busch was making it work up there, making good ground, but it was risky. His car stepped around on him. That last time, Bidell Jr. got out of the groove as well. So while they're racing off the track on the back straightaway trying to make moves, these guys and girls have their hands full down in the corners, boys. Well, Je Jeff Gordon says the outside line is coming in, and the bottom is getting much tighter. And here comes Casey Kane against Al Marola. Everybody pretty happy at Richard Petty Motorsports because their car is back in Petty Blue. Uh, Mike, 2013. One thing that I was not aware of that we learned this morning from John Darby, the splitter on the front of these cars has a rounded face to it. The, the, the splitter is not just a square cut. It's, it's rounded like the, like a wing on an airplane. If you grind that round lip off of that splitter, it hurts the downforce of the car. I think that's why these guys are not getting down on the apron, going down the back and dr driving up on the track. They're afraid they're going to drag that splitter and hurt their downforce. Yeah, could be. John Darby, NASCAR's Sprint Cup Series director. Montoya coming right back up on Biffle and looking for the lead. 55 on pit road. Oh, Mark Martin, who Mark. started on pole on pit road under the green flag. Krista, what's up? Yeah, they just made the call. Rodney Childers telling Mark Martin to come in. The plan to get right side the tires. You don't know if there's a bigger issue with the car or if it's the handling right now. Watching the crew up on the wall, but Rodney Childers made the call telling his driver, Mark Martin, to come in for right side tires. And I guess on the right-hand side of your screen, you could see his teammate, Martin Truex Jr., and his team in the garage area pulling the gear, changing the axles. I guess right now, I'm gun-shy when I see a Toyota hit pit road because of the engine issues they've been having, and now with one of them in the garage. Montoya goes all the way down to the basement to take the lead away from Greg Biffle. That 42 car is been turn on the move. Trouble, turn one. Car in the wall. Yellow's out, yellow's out, 16 still tight here. Chevy of Tommy Baldwin Racing. 
has hit the wall hard in turn one. Third caution of the day, lap 66. Blaney running 31st at the time. Just wonder if he got a, in a little hot or a little uh, too high going into turn one like we saw Kyle Busch do. Fourth car in line, Darrell. Yeah, he's coming in here. No, he, he might have got a little help. David Stremme. Stremme right behind him and into him. Yeah, I believe, it, uh, I, I believe Blaney got out of the gas a little quicker than uh, Stremme thought he was in the 30 car and got into the back of Blaney in the seven and spun him around. Did you see how quick that big new roof flap deployed on Dave Blaney's car the minute that car started getting sideways? Blaney will make it to pit road. The caution is a break for Mark Martin. He will get the free pass. Yikes. Free race introductions. Jeff Gordon and Clint Boyer were having a little bit of fun as we take a timeout for the AT&T race break brought to you by the nation's largest 4G network. Rethink possible. So far, they haven't been near each other on the track. Danica Patrick and David Strebe got near each other. Close call here. Danica worked her way up from 40th to 22nd. Meanwhile, Kevin Harvick, who's the only driver who's won on this track once before it was reconfigured and then after, put a move on Gordon and Kyle Busch had problems in turn two. Clint Boyer had a problem on the pit stop. And Martin Truex Jr. with an axle problem. And moments ago, an unusual pit stop for Mark Martin. Chris Myers back with Michael Waltrip, and you are curious about the Mark Martin pole sitter pit stop. Yeah, the car looked like it was performing okay, but he must have had a vibration and came to pit. But you know, Chris, with Martin Trex Jr., that's Mark Martin's teammate having a problem with his rear gearing. I'm sure Mark was ultra sensitive to what he was feeling. Looked like they came to pit road, changed those tires, and he left pit road. You could see both back tires spinning. That means that he has good traction in the back. He got the Aaron's lucky dog in the Aaron's car. Imagine that. And, uh, <laughs> so he's still in this baby. Part of Michael Waltrip of racing is Martin Truex Jr. Let's check in with Jeff Hammond in the garage. Yeah, Chris, down here in the uh, garage area behind Martin Truex Jr.'s car, and you see them there now covering the gear up that just came out of the 56 car. And, and guys, everybody thought it was an axle-related problem. It looks to me like something happened to the yoke on the front part of the rear gear. And that's where the drive shaft hooks into the front of the rear gear, which happens to help drive the rear wheels. Something occurred there because the yoke was away from that rear gear, which is normally put on in a spline and a, a big nut so that it can't come off. So something happened in that area which cost him the ability to be able to you know, keep that car moving forward, Michael. Thanks, Jeff. And Juan Pablo Montoya ahead of Greg Biffle. Beff, uh, Biffle in the last five races has finished in the top ten, and Ricky Stenhouse Jr. currently running third. First time that uh, he's been in a race here in Phoenix. But let's go back to Mark Martin, who at age uh, 54 is trying to become the oldest winner of a NASCAR Sprint Cup race. It's just an amazing story, the way Mark Martin can still hustle these race cars. Led the first part of this race, has a very fast car. He came back to pit road there. Not sure what exactly he's dealing with, but his job has been amazing. Krista has an idea. Let's check in with Krista Voda. Yeah, at first it was a possible vibration, but what Mark had told Rodney Childers is, I think I have a loose wheel. That was the reason they came in on lap 65 for right side tires. They just came in again for left side tires, telling the team to check the studs on the right side wheel. Chris? All right, Krista. Racing fans, if you know something about speed, buckle your seatbelt and play AT&T Fastest Driver Challenge. Text FAST at 34763 and see who you think has the fastest time. Brought to you by the nation's fastest 4G LTE network. AT&T rethink possible. Mark Martin has led the most laps today at 49. Three leaders, three different lead changes, and so far three cautions. Let's go back up to Mike Joy. Thanks, Chris Martin. We'll restart 36th. We've been watching Clint Boyer fly through the field. He'll restart 26th, while the four drivers at the front did not stop on either this or the last caution. That's Montoya, Biffle, Stenhouse, and Almirola. A Chevrolet and three Fords to lead Casey Kane, Kevin Harvick, Matt Kenseth, David Gilliland, Jeff Gordon, and Carl Edwards on this restart. 37 cars on the lead lap. 69 complete when they cross the line. Here we go. Clears 
Carlos Montoya. He's going to lead this lap, and Al Marola comes through, trying for second on the outside. Juan Montoya's got to be smiling, guys. I mean, they have went through a terrible year last year. This is the best this car is running quite some time. And here comes Harvick. He's on the inside in the 29, way down to the flat. That's the move Montoya used to take the front spot a little bit ago. And rookie Ricky Stenhouse in that number 17. Along with Casey Kane in the five. Daryl Michael was talking about the different grooves. It just looks like you can you can make that second groove work in three and four. It's just not quite there in one and two. It's coming though. Jeff Gordon was telling his team that it's coming. For third place, Matt, here comes Harvick. And Kevin Harvick's car during practice bike on Saturday was third best over a 10 lap run. His car a tick on the free side, same conditions that he's been reporting back to Gil Martin, the crew, much of this race. But Harvick has that 29 pinned on the bottom. This is one of his best racetracks. Think about Kevin Harvick versus all these drivers in the top five. A lot like Casey Kane in that five, they have much fresher tires than those other drivers like Stenhouse. Say one thing, he got a good bumper too. He just shoved over Ricky Stenhouse Jr. off into turn one. And Ricky said, go ahead, man, if you're in that big a hurry. Matt Kenseth coming with him in that new, new colors on the number 20. You know, we've not talked about Matt Kenseth, but he was fast in practice. Steve, we were almost surprised that he didn't sit on the pole in qualifying. Well, Larry Mack, you talked about brakes a while ago. Matt Kenseth has been adjusting his brake bias, saying he's trying to keep his brakes from going, getting overheated. He sees a little bit loose in turn three, but overall, he's happy with that 20 car. And what he means by that, DW, these cars, they have two different brake systems, a front and a rear. So what he's trying to do is put a little more rear brake into it to keep some of the heat out of the front brakes, but that will make you loose getting in. One thing that I wanted to follow up on the 56 car, when you put too much rear brake in the car, you get wheel hop, wheel chatter in the rear. Pow, 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 pow. And that'll break a gear. Clint Boyer racing for 20th now. We listened in under caution. Talk to me. Make the break if you want. Damn it, you gotta talk! Gotta communicate, guys. I was on the bus. Brad, tell us when the deal's open, and then Brian talk. You're in and out. Blip, 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 blip. Step four. See, that was the confusion on the pit stop. Clint thought, too, the team was doing four, and that's why he got all messed up and all, ran over his tire changer, really. Well, you think about last week at Daytona, a two-and-a-half-mile racetrack when the caution came out. You had a lot of time to talk about it. Here you have little to no time before you're back to the entrance of pit road. Exactly, Larry, and it happens often. And when two people key the microphone at once, all the driver hears is... Pop, 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 pop. Yeah. <laughs> You know, watching Eric Almirola is we're, we're on board now with Carl Edwards in the 99 car. Carl is back in the eighth position, but looking at Eric Almirola in that 43, I don't know that this comes as a surprise. Remember, he was running up in the top 10 when he got caught up in the Clint Boyer, Jeff Gordon situation in turn three and four late in the fall race. 43 car has a history of running pretty good here. If I remember right. Yes, it does. Did a guy named Bobby Hamilton win a race here in the 43 car? I believe he did. Tampa, Florida's Eric Almirola running in second, challenging the leader as Carl Edwards moves underneath and past his former ride. The Roush Fenway racing number 17. Or excuse me, Carl Edwards' his teammate, the Roush Fenway 17. That's Matt Kenseth's former ride. Kenseth passed him a couple laps ago. Jason Kane on the high side. Here he comes. That, that, that five car, he's, he's got the fastest car in the field. He just has trouble getting to the lead. Kevin Harvick has come to the front. He's six tenths off the lead. And Mike, when we say things like that, that's because I'm looking at the scoring monitor. And Casey is running the fastest laps of anybody in the top five or six there. Kane closing from 1.8 seconds back. 80 laps complete. Phoenix. Complete, no change in the front five. A little more separation for leader Greg Biffle from Almirola, Harvick, Kane, and Montoya. Those two cars at the front may have to pit fairly soon. 
Danica Patrick's day has not gone like Daytona. She currently runs 28. I'm not too wild up out here. I'm just frustrated, you know? I uh, ain't going backwards, so I just, I'm just getting pressure and I can't do much about it. Yeah, 10 4, you're doing fine. Yeah, you can't make something that's not theirs. And after that transmission, she and J.J. Ailey got into it. Now, they had bumped once earlier in the race. And there's a little bit of chrome horn for you. And, and what she's talking about, I've seen a number of occasions where people have put her in a really bad spot. And she really had, had to give. She couldn't do anything about it. She's a little frustrated right now. But remember, she's a rookie. Inside. Still inside. They're high. Clear. All clear. And under each caution, Danica Patrick has been brought down pit road, so Tony Gibson and the crew can make significant adjustments each stop. And Mike, when the race started, it's under cloud cover. Her tight and then snappy on exit loose condition has gotten progressively worse. The next stop, look for this team to make an even significant adjustment. Tony Gibson said, big swing next time down pit road. Thanks, Matt. Scott Speed's taking the Levine family racing number 95 to pit road where he will join Mike Bliss and Scott Riggs. Martin Truex back on track, 32 laps down, and a couple other drivers trying to fight their way back up through the field. Clint Boyer up to 17. Kurt Busch up into the top dozen. Mark Martin has recovered to 24th. That 56 getting back in the race and not having axle drive plate problems is a big sigh of relief for a lot of teams down there because that was an unknown. Now, Dale Earnhardt Jr. in this 88 car, he was one of the drivers that came to pit road under that last caution. And Matt, it looks like he's overtaken these drivers that's been staying out. Larry Mack, Steve Letard has brought him down pit road just about any opportunity he can. His car has been tight and trying to take uh, information learned from their teammate, Casey Kane, who's running up in the fourth position. Casey was saying that he felt like when he jumped in the gas almost too soon, he really made the nose take off and slide that nose on exit too tight. That's what Stevie told Dale Earnhardt Jr. because that's similar conditions. Jr. said the final 25% of the corner, it is just so tight. He's been fighting that, Mike. I, I remember yesterday we had the in-car camera, we were watching him, and he had a ton of wheel in it. He was really, really tugging on the wheel to the left, showing that the car was extremely tight. Mike, you were talking about our leaders up there like Greg Biffle, Eric Almarola. In fact, three of our top five drivers, they have not been to pit road since lap 22. Probably next 10 to 12 laps, 15 at the most, they'll be having to make green flag pit stops. 36 drivers still on the lead lap. Pitch battle here for 19. Caution of the day, Ryan Newman pounded the wall in turn number four, got down into turn one, stopped, drew the caution, and then made it around to pit road. See him way out the windshield of Danica Patrick's car. Her teammate Newman going into the wall. And that is a big break for Biffle, Almirola, and Montoya, who would have had to stop shortly under green. Now they can pit under caution. Steve? And Eric Almirola telling his crew, the car started getting tighter in the middle. Don't hurt it too bad so I can continue to take off on exit, tires and fuel, and an air pressure adjustment for the 43 match. And Casey Kane, Steve, and Kevin Harvick pitting in the same general area with just an open stall between them. The sun has come out. Both drivers saying that their cars have gotten looser and looser on this past run. Four tires for both, chassis adjustments for both. And they're away. Krista. The driver wanted wedge. The crew chief said, no, let's do air pressure. Crew chief wins this call. It's air pressure for Greg Biffle. There's a race off pit road led by Carl Edwards. It's pretty much evened everyone out. Everybody pitted that time. 100 laps complete in the desert. Caution out for Ryan Newman. Tire went down, he hit the turn four wall. Carl Edwards was the first off pit road, but Mark Martin, who was in the pits at lap 67, did not stop. So Martin goes from 24th to the lead, restarts first, and he leads off turn two. Good move on the Rodney Childers part to get that car back up front. Yeah, he was the only driver that did not pit. Think about it, two cautions ago, he was a lap down and got the free pass. 
New second place car, Brad Keselowski, the series champion, who in the offseason, Penske, Team Penske moved from Dodge to Ford, and Keselowski up into the second spot. Krista? Well, Brad Keselowski has said he has really good speed on a long run. He also, before that last stop, about lap 83, came on the radio and said, my car is really good. It's just hard to pass. Boy, you get out of the groove, though. That outside is still... Well, that's what happened to the 51 of A.J. Allmendinger. Watch Casey Kane the five go high. And that takes Allmendinger up and into the loose stuff. Did a great... Allmendinger did an awesome job of keeping that thing out of the wall because, as we had seen earlier, a couple of guys didn't, weren't that, quite that lucky. But it took him a third of the back straightaway to recover. In fact, he lost about 10 to a dozen stops. Spots. Casey Mears, 26. 35 cars on the lead lap. Joe Nemechek got the free pass for... The second time today, putting him back on the lead lap. 106 laps complete. Toyota top performers, Mark Martin, the leader. Look at Clint Boyer, who uh, overcame that pit road problem to work his way back up to seventh. Danny Hamlin started in the rear. He is 11th. Matt gets at 13. What most of the top 10 drivers did, aside from Mark Martin, who stayed out, most of them to get that track position, especially Clint Boyer with his issues he's had, they elected to go with just two tires versus most everyone going with four. Second race of the Sprint Cup Series for 2013. Great opportunity here for you to grab the volume knobs on that new surround sound system you got and crank it up. Mark Martin back out front. He's led 59 of the 110 laps today. You know, that second place car of uh, Brad Keselowski, our current champion, the two cars. Larry, that car, they didn't win a pole last year. They're, they're notorious for not qualifying all that great. But man, when this car gets in the race and they start getting some long runs, that two car and Brad Keselowski really come to the front. Now, Carl Edwards in the 99, although he's got his hands full with Tony Stewart in the 14. Remember, he towed Daryl Walter from the pace lap he felt like they had something as far as race trim think about it carl edwards has not won a sprint cup series race in almost two years and it is eating him up 70 races looking for the turnaround here jimmy johnson started third now back up into the top five after pit stop cycle around yeah they had that one stop there about the second stop i think it was they did some of that car and it wasn't very good but looks like they got it back And the rebound story of the day so far, Clint Boyer. His Toyota having trouble on pit road, a miscommunication, two tires versus four, and bumping into the car that pulled in in front of him. But he's come back up to seven, sixth round. Continue to be impressed with Kurt Busch in his 78 car, all the way to the back of the field when the race started in a backup car. He's been in the top 10 quite a bit, two tires on that last stop. There he is in seven. This guy right here impresses me, Larry. This team has really done a nice job of adjusting on the car, man. DW, I don't know of any driver who's been looking so much forward to seeing this new Gen 6 car hit the racetrack than Dale Earnhardt Jr. Much more in his wheelhouse, the feel that he gets from this race car. Two wins here at Phoenix, and Steve Latar called strategy on the last stop. Two tires came in 19th. He went out 70, settled in back at 8th. 
the car much better. They're hoping to see what kind of feedback they can learn from two tires on this run to use for late stages of this race. Kevin Harvick running ninth, started seventh. He's been as high as third in the running order. And he's the highest running driver right now that went with four tires on that last stop. Eric Almirola from Tampa, Florida in his second season for Richard Petty Motorsports. And he's been up as high as second today, currently 10th. And Denny Hamlin, his position matches his car number. That's the highest he's been all day after starting in the back. Craig Biffle rounds out the top dozen, 115 laps complete in Phoenix. We welcome you back live, NASCAR on Fox in Arizona, the Subway Fresh Fit 500. Along with Michael Walter, Chris Myers, trackside, and 54-year-old Mark Martin, who started on the pole, has the lead back for the second time, just ahead of Brad Keselowski and Tony Stewart with 189 laps to go. And let's take an inside look at what's happening in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series, brought to you by Sprint. And looking at Kurt Busch in the 78 car, talk about the biggest mover where he started and where he has moved up to. Get unlimited access to NASCAR with NASCAR Mobile 13 app and truly unlimited data from Sprint. No metering, no throttling, no overuse. And while on the Sprint network, learn more at Sprint.com slash speed. <coughs> and Michael Walter Racing, let's take a look with Michael Walter at Mark Martin. Yeah, Mark's had an up and down day, as you can see. They had a loose wheel, they pitted and fixed it. He got real lucky, Chris. When he came out of the pit, he was the Aaron's lucky dog. He got his lap back. On the other hand, Kyle Busch had an accident two or three cautions ago, not been in a position to get his lucky dog. Kyle's running back in the 36th position, still a lap down. He's in his 33rd race here in Phoenix, Mike Joy, and uh, none of the drivers in today's race have been in more. The experience of Mark Martin and the speed will it hold up in the second half of this race. Well, Chris, another number for Mark is 60. The last time Mark led over 60 laps in a race, and today he's already led 74, that was New Hampshire, September of 2009. He won. The number he's thinking about right now is that two number. Brad Keselowski. He's going to let you go here. Uh, it looks like it might be Miller time, guys. Brad to the inside. They move past Josh Wise trying to limp back to pit road. And Keselowski's out front. Started 11th. And leads at lap 127. Now, Mark Martin, that 55 car, stayed out on that last caution, last pitted at lap 67, somewhere here in about 20 laps. He'll have to come to pit road and make a green flag stop if we don't get a call. And there's a guy that's creeping up into the picture here as well, Tony Stewart back there. I talked to Tony's crew a couple of times. They said all weekend long he has loved his car. He's had no complaints about his race car, and he is sitting there in a really good spot right now. Now, Stewart and Kozlowski are on the same pit stop schedule. They were both in at lap 100. Carl Edwards was in at the same time taking left side tire. And he's a ways back of the three leaders. Now, you heard Michael Waltrip just talk about Kyle Busch hoping to get that lucky dog by being the first driver a lap down. The problem, into this long green run, Mark Martin and Brad Keselowski, they're putting other drivers a lap down like they just put Joe Nemechek a lap down. So that really hurts Kyle Busch's chances should the caution come out. But one thing about Kyle Busch, I watched him, Larry, they've been in the pits a number of times. Every time they had a chance to work on that car, they do have it pretty pretty well back to normal. He's running good lap times. He just needs a break. He's in 35th, one lap down. That's our Nemechek and Landon Castle, as Larry pointed out. There is another way for him to get a lap back, and that is if the caution comes out for him not to pit. If everyone else pits, he can take the wave around the pace car before the restart. See if I can stay in the lead right here on Fox. Lead and high atop the dusty plains of Rattlesnake Hill. Six guns in hand, stand a man called Hammond. Great view from up there. You know, Larry, we talked about the apron of the racetrack and how guys use it to get their cars to turn. We see it a lot going into turn three, but I've been noticing a bunch of guys are starting to 
15 car just came off turn four all the way down on the apron 11 just got down there they're really using that apron coming off of turn four you see the cutting across the back back there that's normal but they're really down on the apron getting out of turn four here and two drivers that i've seen do that a lot prior to even this race weekend here at phoenix clint boyer in the 15 one of them kevin harvick in the 21 is notorious really will help that car turn if the front wheels aren't gripping yeah we have a new left side tire we have all tires are new here this year but we have a new left side tire particularly a lot more grip and that thing will bite down there on that apron brad Kozlowski is your leader Ford EcoBoost track backs. Alan Kulwicki won the first Sprint Cup race in Phoenix in 1988, driving a Ford. Ford has 13 Sprint Cup wins here, the last of which was Carl Edwards in the fall of 2010. Kozlowski's opened up a lead of 1.4 seconds, and Newman's in the wall baseball. again. Turn one this time. That is a huge break for Mark Martin in that 55 car running second. He wasn't far from having to make a green flag stop. And you see the wind in it down on the 39 car of, of Ryan Newman. That's pretty much a sign that he is done. I think he and the car have had enough. Yep. Last six races here, he had five top fives. That won't happen this, this weekend. Well, the first one was a melted bead, but it looked a lot like that. Uh, loss of steering control straight up and into the wall. The same thing, right front tire down. Uh, just when they don't turn, the right front tire down. And that's not unusual. You have one problem with one. It's not, not unusual to have a second or even a third. It's something they can't fix, Larry. Not today. <laughs> Newman exits the playing field. He wanted to get away from that thing, didn't he? <laughs> he just took off running. And he will join Josh Wise, Scott Speed, Mike Bliss, and Scott Riggs in the garage. Got off to such a great start with a fifth place finish in the Daytona 500 last week. But really, truly, there, even at Daytona, I mean, he had his struggles, Ryan Newman did. Got in a bunch of wrecks. The car even in the 500 on Sunday was, made, yes. was beat up a little bit. You know, about 40 laps ago under green, there was only one car in the top 10 here that finished in the top 10 at Daytona, and that was Greg Biffle. Things have changed now. Keslowski leads them on to pit road. Steve? Tony Stewart's been saying the car is really throttle sensitive. When I get back to the gas, it wants to snap loose on me. They're going to change four tires on this 14. They'll also make a chassis adjustment as well. Matt? And Chad Knaus tells Jimmy Johnson, keep it a little farther away from the wall. They're going to go left side tires on this stop. Tremendous amount of brake dust as he pulls away. Oh, close call. Almost flipped the 10 car and exit. Krista? Brad Keselowski calls for four tires. He said, just keep tightening me up, boys. Meanwhile, Mark Martin, crew chief Rodney Childers said, let's go with rights at the last minute. Called an audible, said, nope, we're going to go with four. Carl Edwards leads them off pit road. Ahead of Jimmy Johnson, Dale Earnhardt Jr., and Kevin Harvin. Kevin Harvin. The brake dust flies into the pits of Phoenix. We got a camera. <whistles> Getting ready to go back to green with 167 laps to go. Closing in on halfway, Jeff Hammond. Yeah, Chris, right now, high top rattlesnake hill overlooking this entire racetrack. And from up here, I'm really getting a pretty impressive view of the guys that have been leading the race today so far, how they can roll in that corner, roll the center, and still keep it low enough to get off the exit and make the drive they need. Now, you can talk about favorites. To me, the one favorite we haven't really talked a lot about today is getting yourself in the right position to be up front and possibly playing that fuel mileage card. Thanks, Jeff. Fuel mileage has been key in the last several races at Phoenix, including the last three. Carl Edwards is going to lead Jimmy Johnson down to the green flag. Dale Earnhardt Jr., Kevin Harvick, Denny Hamlin up into the top five. Al Marola, Kenseth, Kurt Busch, Kane, and McMurray, your top ten. We're back under green. Smooth restart. Edwards pulls away a bit. Hamlin on the inside there at the 29. Harvick, that's the fourth place. Boy, but Harvick in that 29 up there about a groove off the bottom. Got such a run. Right the middle of 
know, Jeff Hammond talked about fuel mileage as we see our little gyro cam here with Jimmy Johnson going down the back straight away. But it's borderline for most of these drivers making it possibly on one more stop. Alvarola trying to take the inside on Denny Hamlin as they battle for fifth. Casey Kane on the high side. He and Matt Kenseth in the 20 working their way to the front. They are seventh and eighth. You know, the sun keeps coming in and out. You get a little overcast, it seems to favor some guys. You get a little, the sun comes out, it seems to favor a few other guys. It's been Kind of ebbing and flowing back and forth here between the sun in, sun out. It's definitely working in the favor of some drivers and hurt others. First time that Carl Edwards has led since the August race, the night race at Bristol last year. Let's get out of Chris Meyer. Mike, time now for the AT&T Mid-Race Report. You're watching NASCAR on Fox Live from just outside Phoenix, Arizona. 54-year-old pole sitter Mark Martin trying to become the oldest driver to win a Sprint Cup race. He's led two different times today. At one point, was a lap down. Danica Patrick started 40th. The highest she's been is 21st, but she's remained on the lead lap. Let's check in with Darrell Walter. Darrell, who are you keeping an eye on? I'm watching Denny Hamlin in the 11 car. He started in the back, had to change engines. He's up in the top five right now. I like Denny Hamlin. I tell you who I like, big brother, Tony Stewart. We talk about aggressive driving, wanting to get hard after it. Tony Stewart is the best of that. Remember Daytona? He was making more moves than anyone. As this thing heats up and winds down, you watch for Tony Stewart. Hey, Larry Mack, you old creature few. Why are we blowing out tires? Well, of course, a lot of brake key, but Michael, I keep watching Kevin Harvick in that 29 car. Finished second and first here in 2012. And let's face it, Matt, we don't call him Mr. Where Did He Come From in the closer for nothing. And he's trying to fill the mirror like Dale Earnhardt Jr., one of the biggest movers, 21st up to third. He is one of the first 18 guys that went with a mix of either left side or right side tires. The biggest improvement has been the handling, though. Steve Letarte told me they have worked the tightness much more out of the race car. Still some gains to be made, but they're very pleased with what they've seen. Mike? Expect track position and fuel mileage to be key today. In six of the last eight Phoenix races, Chris, there have been no cautions in the final 20 laps. You know, and Mike, Jimmy Johnson, he is not, that is not one of his strong points, fuel mileage races, but everything else is. He told us on the pre-race show, even though this is a different track in Phoenix, he is going to run with the same game plan as Daytona that's hanging around the top five all day. He's currently up to second. He wants to be there at the end, just like he was last Sunday. And that is your AT&T mid-race report. And a reminder, the halfway leader of this race, Mike Joy, has won just half the races over the history of racing in Arizona. Thanks, Chris. Carl Edwards out in front by eight-tenths of a second now. And you remember last fall. It is a distant memory, hopefully, for Jeff Gordon and Clint Boyer. But they are in close proximity. Battling for 17. It'll be a distant memory unless someone gives someone a wake-up call. Playing pretty nice with each other right now. Boy, you're a little quicker than Jeff got by him pretty clean there. But I love what Clint Boyer said in the pre-race show. He said, the way I get back at Jeff Gordon is I beat him. Because if I'm beating him, that means I'm in a position to win the race. Good point, Steve. And Mike, the key for Clint Boyer right now is patience. They've been rolling through the center of the corner very well. But he's got to take care of his equipment, and that's what they're trying to do right now. Halfway in Phoenix. Carl Edwards, the halfway leader. Brad Keslowski was the leader not long ago. Now he's back to 14. I'll do the best you can here. You know, it's not going to be as good back there. You know what you've been doing. We'll, we'll get our way back up there. I, mean, I trust you, bud. I love that confidence. You know, he didn't holler, he didn't scream, he didn't say, what's going on? I'm with you, bud. That's how he and Paul Wolf roll. 
they work so well together and they believe in each other you know guys i kind of suspect that the two car of brett keselowski and also the 55 of mark martin taking four tires losing that track position at this point in the race i don't think they'll get four tires again they're going to play their strategy to lose some ground now but make it all up with two tire stops later would you agree with that larry mack good strategy you know michael i was just looking at my chart here to see what drivers change what tires and i think you're spot on i think those drivers in particular they are finished coming to pit road to change four tires. I'm not so sure that you can win this race at any point moving forward by changing four tires. I think no matter what, you're gonna have to change two. Yeah, we've seen that time and time again. Take four, it really doesn't pay off. You don't pick up that much speed and you lose a ton of time in the pit and track position. So it's Ross Fenway leading with Hendrick Motorsports second right now. The two Penske Fords, Keselowski we've noted is 14th, Joey Logano in the 22 11th right now, Krista. And Mike, really impressive run for Joey Logano. When I talked to him this morning, he was really unsure how good this car would be. He said they were still making changes this morning. He really didn't have a good feel for this car at this race. He did finish 10th here last year, but they've just been chipping away at it. Took two tires on the last stop, and he said he just really needs a little bit more grip. And Krista, he should have been worried because that car was very, very bad in practice. It never did have much speed in it, so they have made some great changes to that car. He and Greg Biffle, seven seconds off the lead of Carl Edwards. Fans, you can win the all-new 2014 Chevy Silverado and meet Tony Stewart. Enter for your chance to win at winthenewsilverado.com. Tony, another one of those drivers that decided to go ahead with that many laps to go in the race and get four tires as well. Keslowski coming back against Jeff Burton, 13th place here. And Burton, like Jeff Burton, like you'd expect, uh, he get, you get position on him, he's going to give it to you. He's not going to fight you for it. That's why he's always around at the finish. He may ask you for it back later and expect the same courtesy. You can look at Carl Edwards. Like you have a little sandwich bag or something on there too. Yeah, you could see it right below the F and the U there on the Fusion. That's the drill opening. The good news is he's out front, but it's getting awfully hot outside, so they're going to have to pay close attention to the water temperature. Now, how ironic is it that the subway car would have a sandwich bag on the nose? <laughs> it's not a subway wrap. <laughs> We're pretty sure. But how about Carl Edwards? I mean, you know, he's coming in here. He and Jimmy Finney, they feel like they've got something to prove. Carl does. He needs to win a race. Jimmy wants to work with Carl. And you know what? Even uh, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. told Larry and I and Mike that they want it. The team is pulling for Carl. They want to see Carl get up there, win some races, and do good. Fifth place, teammates. Matt Kenseth passing Denny Hamlin for fifth. Well, I know I said that uh, keep an eye on that 11 car of Denny Hamlin, but the guy that I keep thinking is saving a little bit, and he's notorious for it, is the cat in that 20 car. He was fast all weekend long, didn't qualify well, but he's racing good today. Edwards leading at a four, Johnson in second, the fastest Chevrolet, and Kansas Toyota in fifth. Sponsored by Toyota by Olympus has fallen. When our flag falls, our nation will rise. Olympus has fallen in theaters March 22nd, rated R. And by Sprint, millions of fans, one family. Only Sprint can feed them all. Join the family at Sprint.com slash speed. 139 laps to go here in Phoenix, which has been a great place for drivers looking for a rebound victory. Carl Edwards in 2010 broke a 70 race winless streak. That's how long it's been since he won his last Sprint Cup race. And he's out in front of Jimmy Johnson now by nine tenths of a second. Wouldn't it be serendipitous if the subway car could win the subway fresh fit 500 to break that streak. And you notice the uh, grill opening is clear. There's the sandwich wrapper. And he's gonna use Joe Nemechek here, not as a pick, but get a little aerodynamic help from Joe's number 87. There goes the wrapper. 
And he really did not have to get that close to Joe Nemechek. It just changes the pressure on the nose of that car and just actually just pulls that wrapper right off. And Larry, I think when we look at this new car, this is the second race of the year for this new car. These guys are learning a lot about this car that they don't know. So this is a building that notebook that they have to have. Jimmy Johnson now 1.1 seconds back of Edwards Ford and another Hendrick Chevrolet in third. That's going to be Dale Earnhardt Jr. 2.6 seconds off the lead. Very nice run for Junior. Uh, mid pack for a long time early in the race, but I believe he's a car that the sun being out has really played to his favor. He and Jimmy Johnson both. Well, they ran really good when the sun was out earlier. Clear track between he and Kevin Harvick presently in fourth and Kurt Busch worked on Casey Kane for a dozen laps and Kurt finally pulls through and into seventh place. I would not be surprised to see Kurt Busch in his 78 team win a race here in 2013. He joined his team with about four or five races to go last year had some good finishes including a top 10 right here in the fall. Do not be surprised to see this group celebrating in victory lane and the way he's running today with 125 laps to go. Don't rule it out here. That, I think what's really helping them this year is they have such a strong alliance with RCR. Uh, they actually have a, their team manager or one of their team uh, uh, key guys in the in the RCR shop. Yeah, Mark McCardle. Mark McCardle, yeah. And what they want to prove, Daryl, is you don't have to be a big multi-car team to win, but you have to be aligned with a good team to win, and, and they are. Denny Hamlin started in the back after the engine change, and he's climbed 36 spots to sixth place. Kurt Busch has picked up 34. Dale Jr. 18, Joey Logano, and Carl Edwards, big movers. Denny Hamlin's crew chief, Darian Grubb, in the three races on this configuration, all three top three finishes, including third with Tony Stewart, the first race here in November of 2011. Carl Edwards increasing his margin just a little bit on Jimmy Johnson. Hundreds a lap, but it's gone from 1.1 to 1.4 seconds now. Round it off. Back in ninth, our series champion, Brad Keselowski. He's the second Ford in ninth position. Michael? Oh, Casey oh, Kane like slows. Kane up the hill, turn five, uh, turn one. Looks like Casey had a tire yeah. issue there car, a little bit, but five, he recovered from it. I yeah. think maybe the right front, front is down on that car. Kane was eight. I think he just overshot. I think he just got in a little hot and got up the hill. And what he'll have to do, he'll have to make sure and get the, the marbles cleared off those tires because, Matt, that will almost think you've got a flat tire. Absolutely, Larry Mack. About a lap and a half before, he had just told Kenny Francis, I am absolutely dirt tracking sideways off the corner, just trying to keep it off the fence. And there's a car, Larry, I believe, that doesn't like the sun being out because earlier in this race, he had the fastest car, at least one of the cars, fastest cars in the race. This is the car I'm looking at, y'all. We talked about the pit strategy that that team used in order to get themselves in a position to just take two tires on this next pit stop. Brad is being able to work his way through traffic, pass cars, and get up toward the front. Look for him late, Krista. Yeah, Michael, and something else, he loves this track. And by this track, I mean the new track. Since this track was repaved, he has led laps in all three races. He had never led a single lap before that track repaved. driver who has dropped back a bit is Tony Stewart. Number 14 started fourth and Steve he's fallen to 18. And I'll tell you why DW was talking about the wisdom of taking two tires or four tires because of the time spent on pit road. Tony Stewart said we're going slower with four tires than we did with two. He said this is really frustrating. And, and that's what we saw. We watched guys that took four earlier in the day and they gave up so much track position but they didn't gain any speed from it. Seventh low, trouble front straight away, big pile up. Danica Patrick yep. and the 34 right of David there. Reagan. Charlton. Blue right front. All right, 10 four. She and her Stuart Haas teammate Ryan Newman now both 
those cars pretty well destroyed with right front tire issues. But Darrell pointed out earlier, it's almost like their cars were driving similar. Obviously, both of them had the same problems. You can see it right here. Just dead in the middle of turn four, the car just goes straight. That's probably what caught me. Let's see what happens here with Harry. Right here. Bam. <laughs> that first thing. Get, get low if you can. Low if you can. Back coming outside of you. You're good right there. You're all set. Well, the first big noise was the tire. The, tire the second was yeah. the barrier. <laughs> happened to Jimmy Johnson here last fall. Probably cost him a championship. David Reagan was the innocent victim. Reagan was racing Danica for 26th. Yeah, still on the lead lap, but uh, that car is hurt. Now, pit road is closed. The pace car is leading the field down pit road away from the accident scene, but no one is allowed to stop and make repairs as Danica climbs out and walks away. That is part of the tire that you see smoking on pit road, perhaps the inner liner. Now what this does to the race, we were talking about fuel strategy, making it on one more stop, still way outside the window, but it's also been 40 something laps since we've been to pit road. I think we'll see some two tire stops and filling it up with fuel. Yeah, pit road's closed right now, but right. they're bringing the cars down pit road because all the debris on the front straightaway here. I think that shows you how hard she hit. What that is, that's the foam. It's about 36 inches wide that goes down in the safer barrier. That's how hard she hit. It may be actually out of her, that may be the foam actually out of the right side door of her race car. You have energy absorbent foam in the left and right side door, and I think that's where that's possibly from. Yeah, because I think the door, the left side door is laying down here in the racetrack, Larry. Well, here's pieces of the safer barrier, which, uh, white foam painted blue or pink foam that is and David Reagan's going to try to get his car repaired and back into the race here's another look and this is a hard hit folks and did you see David Reagan went right over up over the left side of her car and that's where that foam came from some of it it ripped that door off on the left side that was that was stunning. That's it. That's the best way I know how to put it. It stunned you when you hit that hard. Pit's still closed, and uh, Reagan going to come around again, trying not to lose too many laps and make more repairs. David Reagan, an unfortunate victim at Daytona as well. All three of the front row cars taken out in one crash at Daytona. Yeah, and, I, and after we watched that replay and, and see how that car went up over the left side of Danica's and tore the whole left side of it off. We talked about at the top of the show about women in major professional sports, motorsports, and we include not just NASCAR, but IndyCar, drag racing, and others. Wow. Where uh, women compete with men on an equal footing, and we've gotten a lot of tweets mentioning equestrian <laughs> events, horse racing, and the PBA, where women also compete heads up against men but they don't have to compete and contend with the safer barrier and race cars piling in at 160 miles an hour as just happened to Danica Patrick and David Reagan watch this this is a really good view here watch that car of Reagan I mean it goes right up over it I thought it was going to clear the car there for a moment and then you can see the whole left side door and all is torn off of Danica's 10 car and that's that foam, energy absorbing foam in the driver's door is where some of that blue foam came from. And I think David Reagan, he was full throttle wide open when he got into her there, trying to get by. A hard crash for Danica Patrick puts us under caution. Field care center after a hard hit when a tire went down. Steve Burns. Carl Edwards took right sides on the last stop, Mike. This stop, he'll take left sides only. Left sides only for Carl Edwards. Back. Steve Hendrick teammates Dale Jr. and Jimmy Johnson second and third, both complaining about their cars being tight. Track is under shade. They think that should improve. They went left side tires in the last stop. Johnson and Jr. both away. Krista. Team asking Denny Hamlin, do you want your windshield clean? He said, need it. Do you want a drink? 
need it. He also needs to roll the center better. They did the opposite of what they did on the last stop. That means two left sides for Denny Hamlin this time. Dale Earnhardt Jr. leads the race off pit road from Carl Edwards, Jimmy Johnson, Matt Kenseth, and Denny Hamlin. Work continues on Casey Kane's car. But right now, here's Chris Myers. And time for an AT&T race break, Mike, brought to you by the nation's largest 4G network, Rethink Possible. 122 laps to go. Kyle Busch, who was trying to bounce back from a rough Daytona 500, running 15th at the time, spins out of turn two. Clint Boyer in a pit stop. Had some trouble on communicating two or four tires with his crew. He lost more than 20 spots in that pit stop and worked his way back up into the top 15. Mark Martin, your pole sitter, after Martin Truex Jr. had a rear gear problem, also with a Toyota. Martin has led two different times, had to have an unscheduled pit stop, was actually a lap down before rallying. And Juan Pablo Montoya led for 12 laps. He led all 20, he led 22 laps all of last year. It's been that kind of a first half, but moments ago, Danica Patrick with a Right front tire right going there. down. As long as you're right. okay. Yeah, I'm okay, but it was a it was a huge hit. All right, simple. As long as you're all right. And Danica, again, if you didn't hear clear on the audio, she said, "I'm okay," but it was a huge hit. So we've had seven leaders, nine different lead changes, and now under the sixth caution with Michael Waltrip, Chris Myers, and an interesting series of developments psychologically. She says, "I'm okay physically." What does this do in race two here this season for the rookie, Danica Patrick? It's a new car, and she hit the wall very hard, and she walked away. I think it gives her added confidence. She can race on the edge and know that if there is impact, she's going to be fine. I think the interesting story today at this point is Dell Jr. You know, he started outside the top 20, raced his way into the top five, and now he's leading the race, and he's proven all race long that he's got a strong car, so it's going to be fun to see if he can hang on up front. Our at and race break. Let's check in now with Jeff Hammond. Yeah, Chris, we're down here in turn four. We kept talking about how many crashes either happened in turn four or right off the exit of turn four. We were standing here just a moment ago, and we always talk about the sounds of what the action is all about. When the right front tire blew on the seven car, you can literally see the tracks going up to the markers on the wall, safer bear, out the exit of turn four. There were three booms. The first one was the right front tire. The second one was when the car hit the uh, outside safer bear, literally the back tires coming up off the ground. The third one was when he she got hit in the side. So three big licks right there. You talked about rare. Watch the right front tire. You'll hear it. There goes the right front. Now listen, big hit there. Another big hit. These we can hear from our location. Again, very, very difficult right now for her to kind of shake this big hit off. Mike? Thanks, Jeff. I speculated that might have been an interliner from a tire. They don't run the interliner here at Phoenix. Ready to restart, completing lap 193. Dale Jr., Carl Edwards, Jimmy Johnson haul them off to turn one. Boy, Jr. was ready to go, wasn't he, Larry? He wants to go somewhere, but watch out. Here comes that 99, Carl Edwards. Got a good run off the of turn two, but here comes Jimmy Johnson down on the bottom. Yeah, Jimmy Johnson in that 48, he got a great restart, and he takes second away from Edwards. Now looking at his teammate, Dale Earnhardt Jr. They've done a nice job there getting that 48 car back to the front. It was, uh, they got off there at one point in the race early on, but they have really made some nice adjustments. Chad Knauss and that whole team. Pat Yoke. Mike Danica Patrick has walked out of the infield care center. You described it on the radio as a huge hit. One of the biggest you've ever experienced? Oh, probably Daytona last year was a little bigger, but um, no, it was, and it was on the right and the left. So whenever those right, you know, whenever those right fronts go, they always feel really hit be hard because you don't broadside, you kind of hit it pretty more straight on. But um, I mean, I hit, took a hard hit both sides and, you know, I'm fine. So, you know, NASCAR is doing a good job with safety, but um, yeah, no real good warning. You know, the car wasn't all that tight and um, I was mostly chasing the rear. So, um, and there was no vibration that, that told me within the next, within the lap before it was going to happen. So, you know, for me, this is just, it just sucks to lose the points. Um, you know, everybody, everybody works hard and at 
after last weekend, we, we really just wanted to get these three races, get some solid, solid points so that when they reestablish the garage area, we could, we're parked in the dirt this weekend, so I really wanted my guys to get in the garage area, so um, we'll just have to come at them at Vegas. I really, really like Vegas, so um, it should uh, it should suit me well, but, um, but uh, you know, we were having a steady day. Not not great, but we were, we were making progress. Daryl, she was having a workmanlike day. She was in 26th on the lead lap, getting the job done. I, I think that's all you can ask out of her right now. I mean, I, I keep saying this, this is a new car. She's a rookie driver. She's going to go through a lot of learning experience. But right now, a guy that I, I just kind of wish it half point way there, I'd say keep an eye on Matt Kenseth because he has the car that's really uh, shining right now. One last thing on Danica Patrick. She talked about loving Las Vegas. One of her few or only top five finishes in the Nationwide Series there two years ago. She truly likes that racetrack. And we'll be there next Sunday with NASCAR on Fox. And that garage thing is huge. I mean, just like she said, she's parking out here in the uh, outside with no garage stall. Jimmy Johnson, his Hendrick teammate, Dale Earnhardt Jr., just ahead for the lead. Well, I look at those two drivers, and you think back to last week, that's the way they finished the Daytona 500, just opposite of that. In fact, Dale Earnhardt Jr., the third time in the last four Daytona 500s, he's finished second. I think he's tired of being a bridesmaid. I'll tell you one thing, I think he's in the best shape he's been in a long time, too. Lost a little weight, been working out. He's ready to race this year. He's focused. Gyro cam on Jimmy Johnson through the nine degree bank dog leg. Back to the flat for just a little bit and then into turn three. That 48 car is pretty stout right now. It's really getting off the corner with a good head of steam. Yeah, it's almost like his performance starts in the middle of the corner. It's turning just a little better than Dale Earnhardt Jr. Almost right there, and he's able to put that throttle down. I think it's even better in three and four than one and two. Yeah, it is. It looked like he might have got a little arrow push that time when he was up so close to Jr. But uh, I, I said earlier, this track is so different, one and the other. One and two, totally different in three and four. Well, I do know this. While they're going at it, there's an orange car that just keeps getting closer and closer to the pitcher, Matt Kenseth. Here's the battle for fifth with Denny Hamlin in the 11, Keselowski in the two. Yeah, back to uh, Matt Kenseth in that 20 car. Like, he was so much faster than everybody in practice. We were surprised he didn't break the track record and settle on the pole, but he, uh, he's he got it hooked up right now, Steve. And DW, you're right. Matt Kenseth just said it's too tight in one and two, but it's getting better as we run. His crew chief, Jason Ratcliffe, said, I think that's the shade in one and two making the difference. They took left side tires on the last time. You know, behind the front four, everything is pairs racing. You have Keslowski and Hamlin for fifth, Boyer and Harvick for seventh, Gordon and Kurt Busch for ninth, Stuart McMurray for 11th. And Mark Martin just got past the 31 of Jeff Burton for 13, two by two by two. Noah would like this race. Yes, he would. Talked about Joey Logano a little earlier in that 22 car. Really had a dismal weekend, but it seems like he and Todd Gordon and that race team, they got it in pretty good shape. Maybe shared some, some notes from Brad Keselowski's two team. It's just it's so good to have a teammate that's running well. <laughs> 108 laps to go in the desert. Dale Earnhardt Jr., leader of the pack. Five drivers each week compete for prizes all season long. Sign up today at foxsports.com slash fantasy. Carl Edwards running in fourth behind Dale Earnhardt Jr., Jimmy Johnson, and Matt Kenseth. Casey Kane in 22nd trying to rebound from a pit stop where a tire hung up and Kane fell from 11th to 23rd. And uh, once again, Mikey gets in the corner here, turn one, the car gets loose and up the hill to Gill. There he goes again. Matt. And DW hasn't said much about the car being loose this run. And Mike, you touched on it. When they pitted on the left rear, they went to put the new tire and wheel up on the hub and two lugs 
fell off. That's what cost them that time. Thanks, Matt. He's not the first driver who's got to dig himself out from deep in the field today. Denny Hamlin and Kurt Busch did it starting tail end after replacing an engine and going to a backup car, respectively. Clint Boyer has come back from a pit stop problem to run up in the top ten. He's now seventh. And two spots behind him, Jeff Gordon. Here's Steve. Yeah, he's fought his way back inside the top ten, Mike. Jeff says it starts off tight on entry, getting into the corners, but the longer I run, the better it gets, the better I feel like it's coming to me. And a lot of that, I think, Steve, could be just air pressure build up in the tires. You have to start the air pressure pretty low because it's going to build so much. And once it builds up a little bit, it certainly helps the performance of Jeff Gordon's car. And there, he seems to be one guy that has really moved around on the racetrack quite, quite a bit. I know earlier he was talking about the top felt better to him, but now I see he's running back around the bottom again. Sun in, sun out. That could be a part of the equation. Down to 106 miles an hour in the corner and during practice. We were seeing 160 plus at the end of the straightaway. And there's the steering position that tells you how much he's having to turn that wheel. Now, Greg Biffle ran up front for a while, Krista, but now he's back in 18th. Why? And Mike, he is struggling right now. Yes, yeah, started 17th, worked his way all the way up to leading laps, running as high as first, now back in 18th. And the reason being, he's chattering all four tires. Back on lap 198, just about 20 laps ago, he came on and said, I cannot drive the car this way at all. And Larry, you know this, that the crew chief, you just keep cheating that air pressure down, down, down. So you get it as low as you can possibly get it without having a problem. They may have just gone too low with the air pressure. But I just see so many drivers that were up front leading and right near the top five that's not there now, like Greg Biffle, like Mark Martin. Now here's a battle between Carl Edwards and Brad Keselowski. This is a battle for fourth place. But I just see so many drivers that were up there leading laps, and now they're outside the top ten. It's been a come and go kind of day for most of the field. Yeah, and it really just all starts with when you take two or four in the pits. Then I think the I think the conditions have changed, you know, with a little sun out, a little sun in, and so it's 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 helping some, it's hurting some. It all started at lap 22 on the first caution of the day when half the field pitted and 14 drivers stayed out. And we've had different agendas going ever since. So Brad Keslowski draws a beat on Carl Edwards. Two Fords fighting for fourth place. If I'm doing my numbers right, Brad Keselowski is the highest running driver right now. Michael Walter talked about this on the next to the last caution that elected to go with four tires. Now, pretty much the majority of all drivers went with just two tires on the last caution. So it's almost like he's starting to maybe pay dividends for that move back on lap 142. Jack Roush. Of Roush Fenway racer, racing longtime uh, drag racer, then moved to IMSA, then came to NASCAR with Mark Martin. Now has quite a stable, he and Doug Yates. Roush Yates engines provide the power to all the Fords in this field. Ninety laps to go in Phoenix. Dale Earnhardt Jr. now with an eight tenth of a second lead over teammate Jimmy Johnson. NASCAR on Fox. 83 laps to go in Phoenix. Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s lead over Jimmy Johnson. Stable at about six tenths of a second. So let's take an inside look at what's happening in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series brought to you by Sprint. Mark Martin, the pole sitter, has led the most laps today. And you can get unlimited access to NASCAR with the NASCAR Mobile 13 app. And truly unlimited data from Sprint with no metering, no throttling, and no overages. Learn more at Sprint.com slash speed. Earnhardt Johnson and Chevrolet is Matt Kenseth's Toyota and the Fords of Carl Edwards and Brad Keselowski are the front five with 81 laps to go. Now Jeff Hammond with what's fresh off the wire brought to you by KFC. 
Well, Mike, we're coming down to the very end of this race, and the strategy on pit road, especially for the 88 car and Steve McCarty's crew chief, is getting that car on pit road. Don't get caught speeding. Get us two tires. I'm talking about just two tires full of fuel, and don't get caught speeding back out because holding this track position, I think, is going to be the key to Dale Earnhardt Jr. winning his first race of 2013. And that's what's fresh off the wire. We've seen so many mistakes on pit road today under caution. If this comes down to a green flag stop, they're going to have to pit a lap about lap 270. Jeff talked about getting a full of fuel. You're only going to need a little more than one can. So a lot is going to be on the shoulders of those two tire changers because that's what won Dale Earnhardt Jr. the battle off pit road the last time. They beat Carl Edwards' crew on changing two tires. Based on what, if, I, if I've been watching my tire wear all day long and I don't have a right side issue, I'm going to throw me a couple lefts on that baby in a can of gas. I'm going to be gone. Now look at Jimmy Johnson right here, the blue car. He has drifted back from Dale Earnhardt Jr. He's lost about half a second to the leader, and that red car closing uh -huh. fast, that's Matt Kenseth. And that's the car I kind of keep watching, Mike, because he looks much better than anybody else on the racetrack right now. He's got a great line. He gets up off the corner with a lot of speed. Matt Kenseth, what a great, you know, what a champion he is, and he's got this thing figured out, I believe. How about those two Hendrick Chevys in front of him, Matt? And Dale Earnhardt Jr. on the previous stop, Mike, again, they were two tires, but Steve Letarte made a small air pressure change in the front, just trying to give Dale Jr. more grip. Jr. just told Steve Letarte the balance of the car is okay. Meanwhile, his teammate Jimmy Johnson losing some ground to Dale Jr. He says his car has gotten tighter and tighter on this run. Well, that, that, that pretty much backs up why he's been why he's been backing up and starting to lose ground to Dale Earnhardt Jr. David Stremme there in front of Dale Jr. trying to hold on to the lead lap. And trouble for the 38. David Gilliland has a right front down. Yeah, it looks like another, another tire. Bring pit road, bring pit road. Caution is out at lap 237 for Gilly. You saw that battle, guys, between our leader, Dale Jr., and David Strimmey. Strimmey's hard-fought battle to keep that Swan Racing car on the lead lap is that man's benefit. Strimmey stays on the lead lap. Kyle Busch gets that lucky dog that he's been chasing all day long. So big break for Kyle. Good job by Strimmey. David Gilliland was 23rd, solidly on the lead lap when this happened. Watch the 38, the white car. You see the black smoke come from the tire. Looks a lot like what happened to Danica there a little earlier. That thing blows, and man, you got no, you got no hope. You just hang on and thank God for safer barriers. The minute you saw that puff of smoke, that's when that tire blew out. Nice job of Marcus Ambrose in the number nine, avoiding being a big part of that. And Michael mentioned uh, Kyle Busch. He has fought hard. I mean, he's been trying to get get at least get back on the lead lap, and I don't know, did he make it then? He did. For, for 200 laps, he's been fighting to get back there. Pit road is open, Steve. Matt Kenseth wants a tear off on his windshield. They're going to do right sides only on the 20. He said his car is pretty good, just a little bit loose in. On the other side, the 99 is just a little bit loose off. Right side tires for the 99, Matt. And the 88 of Dale Earnhardt Jr., he told Steve Letard, that my car started to get freer and freer as they went. They waited to top the car off of fuel, left side tires on the 88. Krista. Brad Keselowski also in. He asked his crew chief, can we make it from here? Paul Wolf said, copy. Brad said, I'm in with whatever your plan should be. Once again, it's Carl Edwards that's the big gainer coming off pit road. Remember, they lost the battle the last time. They made up for it, and right there could be critical because you see right up there, 74 laps to go. I think pretty much you may be done coming to pit road. It's all about hard racing from here on out. Track position is key. David Gilliland brings out the caution flag, the seventh one today. With 74 laps to go, you're watching NASCAR on Fox. <laughs> will come with 70 laps to go. Dale Earnhardt Jr. was racing Carl Edwards down pit road. Edwards to his right. 
And that's Casey Mears coming to his pit just 47. ahead. Whoa! 47, keep coming. You're good. 47. And that's 47. how Edwards was 47. first off pit hey. road. Take a look at it from high above. And Casey Mears is doing nothing wrong. They tell you stay out until you get to your pit box and then turn in. But Carl and Dale Jr. side by side. You can see right here, Dale Earnhardt Jr. and his crew, they had a pit stop, but right there was that one instance. You see two seconds difference. It was all happened there with the 13 car, Casey Mears. And, and this this is, now you gotta suck it up. This is when whatever you got, it's time to show it. Time to go. And Edwards scoots away. Junior's car does not go. He spun, spun the tires. tires, spun the tires, Dale. Yep. And that could have stacked up the whole field. Yeah, we haven't had one of those yet, but that was close. Look at a two by two. Desperate fight for position here. Best chance to gain a spot on the restart. I'm just telling you, like every race you ever go to, folks, these last 20, uh, this last uh, 69 laps, they're going to be nail biters because this is when you just give it all you got. Boyer pops out in fifth place. How about our leader, Steve? Crew Chief Jimmy Fennick just told Carl Edwards, you are three laps to the good with your fuel. Jimmy Fennick won here in 2005 with Kurt Busch. Car up in the wall, turn three and four. That was Casey Kane, but he did not pop a tire. He continues, just got up there and brushed it. Audio from Brad Keselowski. Driver Steven here. Oh. Yeah, nothing too aggressive. But yeah, anything will help. It goes into overtime. Yeah, pitting with 74 laps to go. That should put every driver in the window. But Paul Wolf told him, basically, we have to figure maybe a green-white checker. But look at this battle here for seventh with Kevin Harvick, Matt Kenseth, and Tony Stewart in that 14. Hey, one thing I noticed about the 20 car, he's good on the long run, but he gets it kind of eaten up on these short hauls here. Kenseth falls right there tonight, or sits in ninth. Behind him, side by side, Jeff Gordon trying to fend off Joey Logano. And behind them, Montoya and Martin. And remember, it was reported that Jeff Gordon's car, it takes a few laps for it to come in after a restart or after making a pit stop. Yeah, he seemed to have another car that, uh, based on air pressure and everything else, it just gets better and better. But, uh, man, you're going to get eaten up on these short runs. Really, truly, 60 laps is not a pretty long run. Behind them, Menard and Biffle. A battle side by side for 14. And right with them, the 51. Whoa, Jay trouble turn four. Kyle Busch up I'm and into the wall, but he continues. I'm not so sure he didn't get into it with his brother. He just had gotten back on the lead lap that last caution by getting the free pass. Yeah, and he'd been driving up through the field pretty aggressively, and I, I'm not so sure he and Kurt didn't make some contact. Kurt's in 20th and has had just a great run today. Uh, but is now drifting back. Kurt restarted in the top dozen, the black number 78. Well, like I said, this is when you take, you just take what you can get. You don't, you got no time to be nice. Kurt got loose, got up into the wall. Kyle Busch basically all but followed him up there. It's this, almost like Kyle was trying to get stopped because it looked like Kurt was going to come back down in front of him. Yeah, this is one of those racetracks. This is an aggravating racetrack to race on. Because you just get in a race with people that you know you're faster than they are, but you can't get around them. So Kurt is now 21st and Kyle 26th. On point, it's Carl Edwards from Jimmy Johnson, Dale Jr., Denny Hamlin, and Clint Boyer. A Ford, two Chevys, two Toyotas in the top five. You know, something I want to point out, we were talking with Michael Waltrip during commercial break. We've certainly seen several right front tires blown. I want to stress, that is not a tire problem. Think about who's been blowing tires. It's drivers that has not had good handling cars. And another driver may have tire trouble, Krista. Well, Mike, I was standing in Greg Biffle's pit when that incident with Kyle Busch happened. All of the guys jumped and ran to the wall. I switched over to Greg Biffle's channel. He said, I have no turn at all. Spotter Joel Edmonds looking at the tires as Greg goes by right now. They said you're okay, but there may be some panic down here in the 16. Thanks, Krista. But there was no caution. 
and Biffle runs at 14. Let's go back and revisit this restart, Daryl. Uh, things got pretty desperate there, pretty much all the way through the field here. Yeah, this joint is notorious for this happening right here, but you notice, Junior, he's spinning his tires. He can't get going. That was something that could have caused a huge wreck at the front of the field. It's also something I was concerned about with the camber in the rear tires, that you don't have your tire patch, the whole tire on the track, you're kind of spinning on that edge. Learning experience, another thing you got to get used to. Well, credit Denny Hamlin in the 11 for doing a great job of staying off Junior uh, because things really could have accordion could have been a huge problem. I, I think most of the drivers are kind of aware of that same thing, particularly at this track. Matt? And Mike, an update on the fuel strategy situation for Dale Earnhardt Jr. running back in third. I talked to Steve Letart and he said, much of the day, we've not been able to get a great reading on what our fuel mileage is because we've been doing so many two-tire stops. That said, he said it's almost like flipping a coin whether we can make it or not. But that said again, I don't see us coming back. But did you, we were listening to him and said, save me fuel, save me fuel. He was panicking, telling Junior to save some fuel, and Junior was turning the engine on and off under that caution. And fuel mileage can be dictated so much by how the car is driving for the driver, what the lap times are. I mean, I look, Denny Hamlin, he just ran his fastest lap of the race about eight laps ago in that 11 car. Here's how it works, Larry. Put on, burning gas. Put off, not burning gas. We're just simple, simple formula. That's right. And track position is so key. If we get a late caution and we end up in overtime or have a green-white checker or up to three of them, Track position so important, nobody's going to want to stop again. Krista? Mike, what is it about facing adversity at Phoenix? It just seems to suit Denny Hamlin. Three years ago in this race, it was his first time back after having knee surgery 10 days earlier. He stayed in the car the entire race. Today, he has fought his way from the back of the pack after making an engine change to be currently running in the top five. Incredible day for Denny Hamlin. Thanks, Krista. 10th place. Joey Logano and Jeff Gordon. And uh, by the way, they've been fighting over it, too. Logano got by Jeff Gordon, and then George, Jeff is trying to get back by Logano. But to the point we were making, we're about 12 to 14 laps into this run. It's like Jeff Gordon's car has come to life. Jeff Gordon needs this thing to stay green. He doesn't need a caution for a short run. Yeah, well, that's a problem, Larry. When you got a car that's good over the long haul, and you just, you start, you lose so much time to the leader that it, by the time you get there, it's too late. Back to the lead where the subway Ford of Carl Edwards, one second ahead of Jimmy Johnson. Dale Jr., another second back, another half to Denny Hamlin, and then another eight tenths to Clint Boyer. That's your front five. You know, you try to win every race, no question about it. But when you're the sponsor, your sponsor is the sponsor of the race, it's a little added pressure, a little incentive to maybe win the race that your sponsor is sponsoring. Carl Edwards faces that this week. Jimmy Johnson will next week as Brad Keselowski flashes past Clint Boyer. And move Brad back into the top five. So that puts two Ford drivers in the top five. As we were talking to Ricky Stenhouse Jr. the other day at Darrell's Motor Cut. He told us, he said, you know, we were off with speed at Daytona, but we felt like it was, it was going to pay dividends at a track like this where handling and downforce is such a key. Let's check with Chris and Michael at the Hollywood Hotel. And Carl Edwards with 53 laps to go, 70 races since his last win. The last time he had a 70-race winless string, it came to an end in Phoenix, his only win on this track. We just saw Brad Keselowski, to another Ford making a move, Michael. We talked about how strong he was in the middle of this race, and his crew made a great decision to get four tires. Now he's on the right tires at the right time of the race. And, man, Chris, I think that two-car, Brad Keselowski, can win this race. He's really moving forward. The thing looks solid. And these guys sort of tiptoe the first 10 or 15 laps on these new tires, knowing that they're not going to have the grip that they will have later. And plus, it was a 60-some lap run to the checker. Got to take care of your stuff. But now, like the boys upstairs are saying, we got to go. A little bit of a gap with Carl Edwards and uh, Jimmy Johnson. So you're, you're hoping there isn't a caution. But if there is, we've seen pit stops and pit stop miscues figure in this race today. Yeah, but I think our first five or ten guys are done with pit road. They're going to stay out. I am hearing on the scanner that a bunch of these guys are really close on fuel. So if it's a straight green flag run to the checker you could watch for one of your favorite drivers running out of gas 
Let's check in with Matt Yoakum and Jimmy Johnson. Our Daytona 500 champion, Chris Jimmy Johnson, running in second. Chad Knauss gave him the good news that you are good to go at least two laps to the good. They're not expected to come back to pit road either, Mike. No fuel worries there. And, and see, that's the thing about Carl Edwards. He's got a comfortable lead, and he just needs to keep an eye on Jimmy Johnson. As long as he looks in the mirror, he's got a nice gap between he and Jimmy. He can kind of set the pace of the race. He can save fuel and still lead this race. Fourth and fifth place there. Now, Matt Kenseth in the 20 just went past Kevin Harvick. So Kenseth, as we documented, good on long runs, and that's what this is starting to be. Kenseth moving back toward the front, currently seventh. That driver right behind Kevin Harvick in that 14 car, Tony Stewart, remember they went with four tires a couple of stops ago, and he was all about to fall outside the top 20. He said the car was terrible on four fresh tires, and now he's moving back toward the front. He's cracked the top 10 at night. But that's that's the way race strategy works. You're at the front, then you do something to the car, and you fall to the back. And then you, but you try to be where these guys are now. Your strategy is to get yourself in this position at the end of the day. Stewart makes the pass, eighth place. The battling duo <laughs> are still at it. They are. 22-year-old Joey Logano against veteran four-time champ Jeff Gordon, and they continue to battle each other hard. Yeah, that's a heck of a battle for 10th place, and neither one of them wants to give it up. And they both had it. <laughs> 47 laps to go. Have we seen the last yellow flag or the last pit stop of the day? Supports is proud to partner with Stomp Out Bullying, the leading national anti-bullying organization for kids and teens in the U.S. They focus on preventing bullying and all forms of digital abuse. They educate against racism and hatred, deter violence in schools and online, and help at-risk students. To learn how you can help, Please visit stompoutbullying.org. 42 laps to go with Carl Edwards and Jimmy Johnson staying about the same distance, 1.1 seconds apart. I think that's just Carl keeping an eye on Jimmy and keeping that gap, finding the gap. Dale Earnhardt Jr. third, 2.6 back. Brad Kozlowski, Denny Hamlin. Lap car of Dave Blaney separate the two leaders. Two things with Dale Earnhardt Jr. Obviously, what happened on pit road and then that restart got him back in third in that 88 car. Guys, I'm hearing on the radio that a lot of the teams don't think that the 99 crew waited for that thing to get full of gas. You remember when the caution fell, he was running fourth. He exited pit road first. So obviously, their pit stop was faster than everyone else's. And because of that, did he get that thing full of gas? Let's watch the gas man back here and see if we can get an idea if he gets uh he's shaking his head which that's his indication that tells the jack man steve that it's full let him go steve we heard jimmy fennick say there are three laps to the good however his partner to the right his roush fenway teammate matt gets if they aren't so sure that they can make it Keslowski and Earnhardt. And the series champion, Brad Keslowski, who in the offseason switched from Dodge to Ford, has now moved into third. I'm doing a good job here. We're clearly the best car. Just get what you can, but uh, be smart. I'm doing a good job here. We're clearly the best car. Just get what you can, but uh, be smart. There's the gap for second, third. Larry, we were kind of wondering how Jimmy Finney, the old guy, kind of sets on the pit box for the 99 car this year. We wondered how he and Carl Edwards were playing, how they would get along. Didn't take them very long to find that sweet spot, did it? Well, and we know that Jimmy Finning is a very demanding crew chief. He pretty much told Carl, you know, you can live in Missouri, Missouri, you can do other things, but you have to give me your full undivided attention. Pretty set in his ways. Last year in this race, Edwards was running 12th when he ran out of fuel. Oh, I hope he didn't hear you say that. Well, different crew chief, 
different people working on that car this year. Exactly. Same team, Roush Fenway Racing. But he didn't have to hear you say that because he remembers that. Paul Wolf, the champion crew chief of one year ago for Brad Keselowski. Third at 3.3 th seconds. And that gap is not shrinking appreciably here with 36 laps to go. Yeah, Paul Wolf and Brad Keselowski, the only driver crew chief combination to win a championship in the top two series, the Nationwide Series together, and of course the Sprint Cup Series last year. And Chad Knaus, who celebrated his first Daytona 500 victory one week ago. And he actually slid a ring on Miss Lisa's finger. He is engaged, soon to be married. Congratulations. Earnhardt 4.2 back, Hamlin 5.5 to the leader. And those gaps are stable. There are still 28 drivers on the lead lap that can figure into this. Should we have a caution flag and the chance at another trip to pit road? 34 laps to go. Can Carl Edwards hold that lead? Don't move. We're going to go side by side. 30 laps to go in Phoenix in the Subway Fresh Pit 500 on Fox. Carl Edwards leading Jimmy Johnson by four tenths of a second. How much does Carl want to win this race? Picture this. Every other driver in the top ten has been to victory lane since Carl Edwards last win. I'm watching him. I think he slowed down a little bit. I think he's backing up the pace a little bit. And he's allowing Jimmy Johnson to get a little bit closer, and I'm not sure that's just not part of that fuel strategy. Well, well, you know who else? All right, let's listen in on Jimmy Johnson's crew chief, Chad Knauss. Keep on digging, home boy. That 99 might have to start saving here. If they do, that might be a good opportunity for us to take advantage of it. And that's what I'm seeing. I, I, he's Carl quit charging the corner. He'd been charging turn three pretty hard. I'd watch that gap, but now he's backing off and coasting. I know another gap that's closing. We've been talking about Brad Keselowski in that two. He's been beating Jimmy Johnson and Carl Edwards about a tenth to two tenths per lap. He's brought that gap down from 2.4 to 1.5 seconds. First to third right now. Yeah, and uh, the two car is not saving fuel. I can promise you because I got a great view of turn three. And you can just see drivers that are coasting in that corner, kind of out of the throttle. Brad Kazowski is not one of them. He is driving down into turn three. Two Toyotas fight for fifth. Denny Hamlin for Joe Gibbs Racing. Clint Boyer for Michael Waltrip. I think Kazowski really, I think he smells something. I think he sees those two in front of him slowing down, possibly saving fuel. He's not worried about that, and he is coming in a hurry, guys. I talked to him this morning, Daryl. He's, I won't say he's strutting around the racetrack, but boy, has he got the confidence of a champion. He is ready to roll. He is ready to win. Uh, his idea of defending the championship has nothing to do with defense. No, and you know what? Last week, Jimmy Johnson won Chevrolet. They won the first race in the Gen 6 car. I'm pretty sure Brad would like to give Ford their first win in the Gen 6 car. Hamlin Boyer, and now Kevin Harvick has fallen back into the clutches of Joey Logano for 11th place. Yeah, we were talking about Kevin Harvick at commercial break. This second half of this race just not been kind to Kevin Harvick. He <laughs> continues to slip back. And Joey Logano, he just wants to race somebody. He just race anybody who comes along. Matt? Mike, the 29 of Harvick, he's just been sawed on the wheel. The car just absolutely a handful, so free from start to finish of the corner. Kevin Harvick, Mark Martin, Greg Biffle, drivers that were at the front and even leading this race, now all three of them outside the top ten. And Larry, this is such a critical race for these race teams. With this car, remember, this is the next to the last race in the chase. What you learn today can be invaluable for you when you come back here in November. Edwards, seven tenths ahead of Johnson. Three times since Carl Edwards' last victory. He has been passed for the lead 
on the final lead change of the race. Next time around, 20 to go as Edwards, Johnson, the gap remains stable. Keselowski from third, closing in. Ever so close, and you know what I like about Keselowski? He's not running the very bottom. He's running where the speed is, man. He's found him a fast group. So now it's time for our sprint, 20 to go. Who to watch in these final closing laps? Carl Edwards trying to get it all done here. Yeah, and trying to break almost a two-year winless streak. Tied for the longest of his career, the last one he broke right here. Not since 2009 has one driver had back-to-back -back wins to start the season. That was Matt Kenseth. That's what Jimmy's trying to do. Now here's the guy. Here, here's what I like about Brad Keselowski, his, his crew chief, Paul Wolf. We've heard it over and over again today. I'll do what you say, bud. You make the call, bud. I'm with you, bud. They are tight, man. They're like Jimmy Johnson and Chad Canals. Great team. Let's get down to their pit, Krista. Yeah, on the pit box with crew chief Paul Wolf. Brad, your driver is doing all the chasing right now. Are you guys okay on fuel because of it? Yeah, we're okay on fuel. The Miller Lite Ford's been good all weekend, and uh, the guys have done a great job on pit road today. And um, you know, I think we have a shot at it. We've uh, been turning some good laps here at the end, but just really proud of all the effort that's gone into this car over the off season and uh, all the guys at Roush Yates have given us good fuel mileage. So uh, let's have to see what happens. Go get those other two. Thanks, Krista. The fastest cars on the racetrack last lap, the two leaders, Carl Edwards and Jimmy Johnson, and Clint Boyer in sixth place. They were the quickest last time around. And just to, oh, oh by the way, with Clint Boyer, he won three races last year. All of them because everybody else ran out of gas but him. So I know he's six. Gas is an issue. Chris? Well, if it does come down to Carl Edwards and Jimmy Johnson, nine times those two in their career have finished one, two. Carl holding the edge to a 5 4 advantage. He's won the last two times. He's gone head to head with Johnson at the end. In fact, his first career win, Carl Edwards, remember, in Atlanta, side by side on a last lap pass, overcame Jimmy Johnson to capture that victory. So Edwards is going to have to hold off Johnson, it looks like, one more time. Yeah, and all this green flag racing, I know these guys are close on fuel. I know also that Jimmy Johnson has been laying there watching Carl. Carl ran hard early. He took a break in the middle, but he's running hard again now. I think that you've got to think Jimmy Johnson's got a little left, not only in the tank, but also in his tires to close this deal out. Well, Michael, in three of the last four Phoenix races, the final change for the lead has happened between now and the checkered flag. And Mike, the thing I want to bring up, you brought this up earlier, there have only been cautions in the last 20 laps in two of the last eight spring Phoenix races. Michael Walter talked about these drivers amping it up right now, driving the cars harder. We would have to go 70 laps is there a driver out there flirting with cooking the beat on a right front tire like we've seen so many times today? If you haven't won a race in two years and you're leading the race now and the sponsor is your sponsor on your car, what are you going to do? Anything it takes. You're going to run that thing out of gas if you have to. It's all about winning right now. Keslowski third, less than a second off the lead. And here's Dale Earnhardt, Matt. He's fallen to 5.7 seconds back. Mike, Steve Latar is still looking at the numbers. He just told Dale Jr that I will give you distances between yourself and Denny Hamlin right behind you. When he starts to get too close, I'll tell you, but if you can, back up your corners just a little bit to try to save a little bit of fuel if possible. He has definitely slowed down that 88 car because right now he's about four to five tenths slower than the drivers in front of him. I, I, it's just so fun to watch Brad right now. Brad is sliding his car all over the place. He is driving the wheels off that thing, trying to get up there to Jimmy Johnson and maybe to Carl Edwards. Seven tenths of a second as Jimmy Johnson well, closes a little, gives a little, takes a little. Yeah, well, but the good news is Brad sees him. He's getting closer. Jimmy's getting closer. That's just all a driver needs. That just pumps you up that much more. 
How about our leader, Steve? Yeah, the only thing is, crew team Jimmy Fennick has said is keep an eye on your gauges. <laughs> you know what? I'm like Daryl no, on that no, one. No. I'm going to stand behind the driver. Forget those yeah. gauges now. Hey, hey, don't <laughs> tell me about that now, bro. I'm done with those. <laughs> But, Daryl, it's almost like he steps it up uh, every once in a while and puts a little bit of gap on the 48 that maybe Jimmy Johnson has closed up. I think he's just trying to save as much fuel as he can and keep the lead, Larry. He's Ten to go. Finding that gap. And Jimmy Johnson has a problem, and it's not chasing the leader. It's in his mirror. It's Brad Kozlowski, and Kozlowski's within two car lengths. But that could be great news for Carl Edwards in that 99. Jimmy Johnson and Brad Kozlowski get the fighting it out. Carl Edwards is going to love that. What Brad Kozlowski is thinking, I need to get by this 48 in case that 99 does run out of gas. This is like, I, I mean, I've been here, I've done it. This is like you're sitting on pins and needles. You're trying, you're, if you're Brad Kozlowski, you're trying to catch the guy in front of you. If you're Carl Edwards, you're looking in the mirror, trying to keep that gap the same and not say, not burn all your fuel up, save a little fuel. And now on the interval, you can see that Carl Edwards pulls away as Jimmy Johnson has to defend second place. Eight laps to go. Carl Edwards tries to snap a 70 race winless streak. Yeah, and he's gonna catch a couple of cars here. That's Kenny Schrader in the 32. He gets by him okay. And he's got Kyle Busch up ahead. So far, so good. Traffic not an issue. Schrader stays up high. Johnson and Keselowski shoot pass before turn three. Boy, Brad, I mean, he pours that thing in the third turn. Closes it up, but he loses a little on exit. And Kyle Busch in that 18, he's not going to just roll over. He's trying to stay on the lead lap in case we get a caution. No contest, though, down in turn one and two. No, he's, a, he's, he's no contest for that 99 or, or the 48 or the two, either one. No, he gives room because someday he's going to want some. You see right here, he's up high all the way. Uh, that's, that's the right thing to do. Joey Logano has slowed on the back straightaway. He'll make it around to pit road, but Logano is off pace. He was running just outside the top 10. Engine sounds off as he comes by. It, yeah, it, might, did, it might be out of fuel. Yeah, it did not sound good when it came down the front stretch. But if he, we, we did hear the engine run, but uh, sounded flat and he goes to the apron with four laps to go Logano was 10th and he's saying he's out of gas kind of thought that's what it sounded like it had that flutter in it and he ran out of gas with about five laps to go you figure the fuel mileage these drivers get that's a little over a gallon of fuel that he was short and who's his teammate Brad Keselowski running in third Jimmy Johnson's been able to hold him off and Schrader brings out the caution and it looks like, wall over there track is clear. looks like a right front. We just didn't make that 70 laps that we were talking about. This changes everything. Now, oh, what are you going to do there, Mr. Ritchie? I've look already packed my pit stuff look up. Look at Jimmy Finning. I mean, his hair got a little bit grayer just then. Carl Edwards had victory in sight. Just three laps to go. Now we're under caution. We're going to go to at least one green-white checker, maybe two, maybe three. Do you, how many cars in the lead lap? 22 plus a free pass car. Do you dare stop? If you're in the top 10 or 12, you don't even think about coming to pit road. This Not is even like thinking about any it. overtime game. Do, do you run out of gas in overtime? And you see they're cutting their engines off. Of course, when the engine's not running, there's no fuel being used. So you, they're just coasting here, trying to maintain caution car speed, but coasting to save fuel. Veteran Ken Schrader, way off in the distance. Yeah, 
you see the car take off up yep. the track. We've seen it several times. Slow up top, slow up top, slow up top, slow up top, clear. Yellow's out, yellow's out, safe fuel, yellow's out. I mean, you hear these guys all the time say, yeah, we're good if we don't have any green-white checkers, but once you get into overtime, whoa, who knows? The pits are open. The leaders stay out. Lap down cars coming in. Kyle Busch, Kurt Busch, who just got lapped. Matt? Mike, you yelled caution on the racetrack, and then Steve Latar started yelling, shut it off, shut it off, coast, try to save as much as you can. And Chad Knauss asked Jimmy Johnson, how much were you saving at different parts of that run? Both are going to stay out. Both think it's going to be close. Krista? Brad Kozlowski asked his crew chief, Paul Wolf, Paul, are we good on fuel? Paul's answer, copy. We were three to the good. All right, lead lap cars that came to pit road include pole sitter Mark Martin, Paul Menard, Greg Biffle, Casey Kane, Ricky Stenhouse, Marcus Ambrose, Jamie McMurray. We talked about them shutting the engine off. If you see that the RPM was at zero when it was not running, and then now he's fired it back up. He'll get it coasting, coast up behind the pace car. We'll probably see him reach up there and shut it off again. There he goes. And watch the RPM now. Engine is not running. What Edwards wants to see now is the one to go sign. NASCAR still has safety trucks out on the speedway. See if they can get those cleared and give the field a one to go. And, and this is a, this is a skill of a race car driver. This is having his crew chief, his spotter, him, everybody managing everything they got right down to the end of this race. At least two more laps of caution before we go green. But, Darrell, this is where Brad Keselowski and Paul Wolf, that two team, they've been so good when it comes down to something like this. Y'all, I'm about to have a fit down here. This is everything you want in a NASCAR race. We've had side-by-side -side racing. We've had crashes. And now these crew chiefs, like you said, brother, they've planned this thing out to the nth degree, and we're going to have overtime on top of that. Holy cow, what a day. <laughs> I agree, what a day. We knew it would be. One and a half laps to green as the 33 Landon Castle slows in the back straightaway. And, and, and again, things to remember, hot tires, spinning the tires like we saw Dale Jr. on a restart. It could cost, it could cost the 99 Carl Edwards the race. It could cost Jimmy Johnson the race. Guys running out of gas in front of you, all kind of scenarios. Now, if Castle can't get back to pit road, they would have to wave off the one to go that they want to give them this time. Signal is for one to go. And yeah, it'll be our first attempt at green white checker and there's not a push truck anywhere in sight to push that car in so he's stuck on the back straightaway not what these drivers wanted to see they want to get back racing first attempt at green white checker finish Well, there, I don't see how we're going to be able to go green with that 33 car sitting on the back here comes the tow truck out now Steve yeah, I'm listening to Jimmy Fennick right now. He said, you're good to go, just go. We can make it to 318. That is six laps from now. Well, based on what I've seen in the restarts and last few laps of this of these races, they're going to have to make it that far. It, it's going to be borderline. They, have not, they just now got to the 33 car of Landon Castle. But Larry, they can get him into an opening and off the track before the field comes around on the next lap. They want to go green this time. Yes, they do. And they are trying hard to get him off the racetrack. I think they're going to do it. Every, everybody, I can tell you who else, all the drivers are trying hard. They say, just slow us down, slow us down. Let him get out of the way. To settle it, Edwards Ford, Johnson Chevrolet, Keslowski, Hamlin, Earnhardt, the front five. We're good to go. Boyer, Kenseth, Stewart, Jeff Burton, and Jeff Gordon. This is all about buddies. Don't spin the tires, don't run out of gas, and don't screw up. Kenseth gets a jump. Keselowski shoving him the length of the front straightaway. He actually did shove him. If the leader makes it back around and takes the white flag, the next Whoa. flag after that ends the race. Boy, Jimmy Johnson and he were just so close off that second turn, Keselowski should have the advantage. But this is where Brad Keselowski's been so strong getting down in the corner and getting it turned. He's going to come up in front of Johnson. He's going to give him a room. No, he doesn't have the room. He can't make it. White, White flag. flag. Last lap. 
Carl Edwards, if he doesn't run out of fuel, look at Keselowski. He and Jimmy Johnson are hanging into each other. Here comes Denny Hammond. He'll go on the apron. Hammond, he's on the apron. This can get big when they get the three. Hammond could be in second going into turn Can he three. hold it down? No, he, yes, he can. He got it. Winless streak over. Off turn four. Carl Edwards wins the subway. Johnson for second place. Five each. Uh, nice drive. Sorry about that pit stop. Great job, guys. What an incredible. I mean, Carl had it made. He was setting up there leading the race, but back behind him, all heck was breaking loose. Well, you kidded with Carl Edwards in pre-race and called him five times <laughs> for his five crashes. Unbelievable. Thank at you. Daytona. Thank you, guys. Awesome. Awesome. He is big time today. Yes, sir. Look at this. I mean, how excited can that be? They made a bunch of adjustments with this team. Put Jimmy Fending over there with Carl. These guys are pumped up, and particularly after coming off of Daytona. I was going to say, how could it be any better wrecking five race cars during Daytona testing his speed boots? Edwards the winner, and the unbelievable Fender slam and finish for second. Well, we're about to see Carl Edwards' signature move, and we haven't seen it in two years. We haven't seen old Flipper in quite a while. No, sir. And I wonder if he'll go up and celebrate with the fans like he's been known to do. He might. They're opening the gate. He's pretty happy right now. <laughs> captured the flag and goes up to celebrate with some fans. Yeah, and he's captured the heart of those fans, too, by going up there. What a great tribute. They put a ladder there for him to get up. He just jumped up the wall. The boy's in pretty good shape. I don't know if you've ever noticed or not. <laughs> a great win for Carl Edwards and Jimmy Fennick. And as they go to victory lane, you won't believe our five-hour big move of the race. And it's the 11 of Denny Hamlin on the last lap. The two and the 48 were banging on each other up in the middle of the corner, and that opened the door for the 11 of Denny Hamlin. And watch him take that shortcut, slide right up in front of the two car. And then this gets really good right here. Watch this. It's about one one hundredth of a second. That was about a six inch subway right there. <laughs> Darrell, do you still have the question? Will they use the apron on the back stretch? <laughs> At the end, when they didn't need it anymore. Here's Steve with the runner up. Jimmy Johnson just out of the race car. And, and by the way, he just watched the replay, so I'm curious your take. First at Daytona, second here at Phoenix. Talk about the end of the race. Uh, just very proud of this uh, whole Hendrick team, everybody on this, uh, this Lowe's car. Uh, Chad, Canal, Chad Canals and his leadership. Um, you know, it's a tough year for everybody over the offseason, and our shop worked real hard to get us ready and to open like this. Uh, great qualifying efforts, great speed in the race, great pit stops across the board. I'm very proud of the Slows team. All right, thanks, Jimmy. You got it. Thank you. The backflip is back by 1.02 seconds. Carl Edwards is a winner in Phoenix. Time for the Sprint Post Race Show. We're live just outside Phoenix, Arizona, where Carl Edwards has won the Subway Fresh Fit 500. 20th career Sprint Cup win for Carl Edwards, ending for the second time here in Phoenix. A 70 race winless streak, and Matt Yoakum is there for the celebration. Nearly two years after the last backflip, I can't believe what you had to go through. <laughs> Fuel mileage, a green-white checkered finish, 
and then gas man Sean Ward packing that full. Can you describe those <laughs> final segment of the race? I don't even know. Uh, I don't know where to start. I have a lot of people to thank. This is uh, first and foremost Jack Roush and all of these guys, everyone at Roush Fenway. From Bob Osborne to Chip, Jimmy Finnig is, is the man. Every, the pit crew is unreal. They won this race for us. I have a lot of sponsors who waited a long time for us to get back to Victory Lane. I got to thank Subway, Fast and All, Ford, Kellogg's, Aflac, Geek Squad, UPS, Sprint. I just got a new phone. I actually broke it today. I thought that would be bad luck, but I, I hopefully we'll get a new one. And just all the fans, this is um, this is huge. It's a Subway race, and we won it, and, um, and we're back. What's it mean after almost a two-year drought? Next week in Vegas would have been the two-year anniversary. Oh, I know. I, saw, I talked, to, uh, talked to a couple people about that this week, and... I told Randy after we did media a little while ago for Subway, I said, um, I'm about to start getting mad. You know, I try to stay positive, but we really, really like winning. And um, I, I just, I, I can't say enough about everybody believing in me. I'm telling you, we're back. This is going to be good. Whatever it is you're doing out there, don't lose hope. You just keep digging and things can work out. I'm proof. This is, uh, this is just awesome. One of the coolest wins of my life. The first four Gen 6 in victory lane. Krista? Denny Hamlin's day started having to go to the back. It ended up front, and this was the last lap. Your move. Talk about what you're doing here, going for everything on that last lap. Going for anything. I didn't have much all day. I honestly, um, Pick Crew and Darian really cared it, carried us uh, today, getting some track position. And gosh, it just uh, so hard to pass. And uh, you're going to hear it a lot this week that we've got a lot of work to do to get these cars to pass each other and things like that. Uh, you know, really, it's Aerotite is a huge, huge deal, and uh, it's just this tire is so hard and the surface is new. So it'll be interesting once we get to some racetracks that got a little bit more tire wear. Uh, but you know, really, you could run a whole race on left side tires, and um, it's not supposed to be that way. So um, and it was a good day. I, I was happy for that run. Uh, we definitely uh, we overachieved today, and uh, that's what you got to do when your when your uh, car's not all that good. The overachiever, Denny Hamlin, top five today, Chris. Terrific move by Hamlin, only 12 lead changes today. But in the end, those last two restarts spell victory for Carl Edwards at a four. We'll have more in a moment. Crowd liked what they saw at the end, along with Michael Walter, Chris Meyer, trackside on the Sprint Post Race Show. The Subway Fresh Fit 500 and the unofficial results. Well, we know it's official that Carl Edwards held off Jimmy Johnson and Denny Hamlet. Brad Keselowski had a lot to do, too, with Carl, those two fellow Ford drivers, and Dale Earnhardt Jr. finishing fifth. Yeah, strong run for Jeff Burton, top ten for that team. And look at A.J. Amendinger, 11th place finish in his debut in 2013 with that Finch team. Greg Biffle, 17th. Casey Kane winding up 19th. Kyle Busch just had trouble trying to get on that lead lap. And Mark 23rd. Our post hitter Mark Martin with uh, a late pit stop there was short on fuel, relegated him to a 21st place finish. And David Strimmey fights home to a 30th place finish as well. Danica Patrick started 40th, moved up to 21st, but while running 26th, had a tire problem, hit the wall, said she was okay, but a tough hit. Rounding out the results, we mentioned Brad Keselowski finishing fourth, and Krista Voda is standing by with Brad. Yes, Chris, we knew fuel was a concern for a lot of these drivers. How close was the number two team? Did I hear you say ran out of crossing the start finish line? Yeah, we did. We ran out across the start finish line. I guess we hit it just right, uh, but uh, just a, a solid day. We had a really fast car today with the Miller Lite Ford, but uh, just came up a bit short. Really happy for Carl if we couldn't win. It's good to see another Ford win. And, uh, you know, I know how important this race is to him with Subway and also good for him. And gave him a little push there at the end and uh, was hoping that I could use that momentum to get by the 48 too, but that didn't work out. And, Raced him pretty hard, got sideways, and he uh, he ran pretty cool, and uh, just good racing there then with him and Denny Hamlin, and just came up a bit short of the win, but uh, our cars are fast, best start to the season I've ever had, and um, we're pumped up. We've had a shot at winning all four races I've been in this year with the uh, Nationwide and Cup, and just came up that little bit short, but uh, we've got a lot to be proud of at Penske Racing. The champ starting off right where he finished last year. Steve Burns? Well, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Dale Earnhardt Jr., you led some laps today. Talk about this race in its entirety. Well, I think we, um, you know, used strategy to get up front on pit road to get ourselves track position. We were able to show we had a pretty good car. On that, uh, on the uh, pit stop, the 99 got the lead. I was uh, on the inside of him on pit road, and I think I could have beat him off, but the 13 was trying to get in his stall, and I had to lift for that. And I think I, I knew right then that was my opportunity to win the race was, was right there. It's real hard to, you know, difficult to pass with a, with a big spoiler, but... Uh, you know, our car was good enough to actually run up on some guys and make some passes. 
I want to thank Steve. They made a, a lot of good changes. Did some good stops on pit road. Thank National Guard, Guy Mountain Dew, all our partners. But uh, we haven't been good here. That's a good run for us. I'm a little disappointed because I think we could have won. And uh, you know, hate to give up, hate to give away them points. But uh, and love to get a victory lane. You know, so this is a good sign for us, though, that we've improved this much at Phoenix. Hopefully, it's a uh, time for the rest of the season that we're going to be all right. Thank you, Dale. Yeah. Thank you, Steve. Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Brad Keselowski are both tied for second behind Jimmy Johnson after two of the 26 points races to the chase. But Carl Edwards, 15 to 1 odds in Las Vegas, where we're going next week. He is leaping in victory lane with a win, and we'll have more in just a moment. This race show continues. Carl Edwards finishing ahead of Jimmy Johnson and Denny Hamlin. And what a battle as Carl Edwards ends that string. He was having to fight off Jimmy Johnson as Denny Hamlin made a move. Denny he was trying slow down. He was trying to squeeze the door closed <laughs> on Jimmy Johnson and 05 time wasn't having any part of that. Yeah, and you know the yellow line's not out of bounds. It's only in Daytona and Talladega. It, it, certainly he used that. Now after two, it's remember it's 26 before we go to the chase for the end, Michael Walter, but who's really in trouble here? Well, we've got some big stars that are outside the top 30 in points. Casey Kane chased guy last year. He's 31st. Um, Kyle Busch, 33rd in the points. Heck, Harvick, he's 30th. Tony Stewart's 23rd. We got some big names that better get going in Vegas. And Jimmy Fennig, the crew chief of Carl Edwards' team together for the first time. You heard Carl Edwards talk about him. Fennig has won a championship with Kurt Busch. He's won a couple of Daytona 500s, and he helped Carl Edwards uh, end that 70 race uh, string. In fact, he was called five time for the crashes in the speed weeks, his worst weeks ever. And now he's back uh, with a win as Jack Roush and the subway crew celebrate. Tonight on Fox, The Simpsons, it's the old animation domination. Family Guy, and then Bob's Burgers. And Carl Edwards, in fact, his last win prior to this one was in Las Vegas. We'll be there for the Cobalt Tools 400. Note the start time, 2.30 Eastern, 11.30 Pacific. Tony Stewart had to hold off Jimmy Johnson to win in this race last year. And Victory Lane over on speed has more coverage from this race. Well, Mark Martin led 75 laps from the pole, but Carl Edwards led the most laps and captures the win after two races, and we head to Las Vegas next Sunday. For Michael Waltrick, I'm Chris Myers. Our entire production crew, thanks for watching and being a part of NASCAR on Fox.